If you like the story you can support the author on Patreon link is in the description. Chapter 26, Another Meeting Jin Wu, are you up? I am now. After you woke up the entire neighborhood with your shouting and banging on the door. Well, that's good then. Are you ready? We can go and meet all those S-ranked hunters today. Are you excited? Sure. But after spending so much time with you, I don't think there is anything that can impress me anymore. Oh, I'm flattered. But don't kid yourself, you have seen nothing yet. Now let's go see all those arrogant and extravagant characters. They got to the big gym that the Hunters Association had prepared for the Hunters. It was supposed to be used to get to know each other. But it was more of finding out weaknesses and assessing each other. Japan was pulling a dirty one. But that wouldn't matter anyway. When this was done, Japan would be humiliated and have lost many S-ranked hunters. Besides, Hades needed to do something soon, otherwise he would go insane. It was just not for him anymore. He needed a good fight or something to do. He was now certain. This would be the last dungeon for him. He will fight this and use that chance to help Jin will get stronger and then, he would dip after collecting the monarchs. Hades and Jinwoo arrived and entered the building. Jinwoo felt the powers that clashed inside and was amazed. His senses had gotten much better and he was more sensitive to things. An amazing leap in strength since he first started. Go Gun he took Hades and Jinwoo and they talked with each other. Are you excited Hein? Hmm, not really. I am excited to get to Jeju Island and remove this plague for good but I am not very excited to meet a bunch of S-ranked hunters that think of themselves as more than what they are. Ho ho, then what are they? Well, they are simply S-ranked hunters. There are many of those around the world and they don't need to be so arrogant about it. And what about the captain of their guild? Goto Ryaji. I guess he is stronger than the rest. But his belief that he will rise to become a national level hunter will never happen. He is too weak for that. But I don't think I have to tell you that do I? Overall the sparing the Korean hunters did with the Japanese, was boring for Hades. He simply wanted to get it over with and not watch them wrestle on the ground. When Goto Ryaji recommended a group battle, I was tempted to let Jinwa participate but decided against it as he would get into the limelight soon enough. No need to have other countries find out about him yet. Hades refused to participate and simply watched them. You are not going to fight, Hein, asked Go Gun He. No. I would not fit into this group. I have the feeling that this is more than just a spar. They are checking us out. Or at least the Korean hunters. You are correct I also believe that. Do you think they are planning something? Whatever it is, I'll be there to stop it should it happen. After the fight of a 4v4, Goto Ryaji approached me and started to ask me whether I would be open for a spar. Gojo san asked whether. I understood him. No, I am not interested in fighting you. You speak Japanese. Do I have to answer that? You, just did. This conversation's over. Hades turned around and walked away. Wait. Hum? What is it? I wanted to ask why you are not interested in sparing with me. Why do I need to explain myself to you? You don't. Correct, no if you would excuse me. Come Jinwoo, there are still some dungeons we can hit before it's time to leave. Another week passed during which Hades had Jinwoo do more dungeons. He was getting stronger constantly. Hades loved to see it. He wanted to see whether he could have Jinwoo fight Baru at his current level. Hades would of course take the shadow but maybe it could help Jin will level up some. The day had finally arrived. It was time for them to go to Jeju Island and fight the ants. Jin will was nervous. He was still not sure of himself fighting among these S-ranked hunters. I knew though that he had also entered the S-rank after he cleared the hard B-rank dungeon. His level was at 82 after Hades had given him a hard dungeon to beat. Thankfully Jinwa managed to pull through and was gifted a pair of beautiful daggers by Hades. The raid started. 
The Korean S-ranked hunters together with Hades and Jinwa got off the helicopter and began to kill ants left and right. Hades told Jinwa to use this chance to grow and further his skill with his daggers. They made their way into the mountain and cleared the chamber. The queen was killed by Jinwa himself, together with the beautiful blonde who seemed to dance around the monsters. Hades had not truly done anything up to that point. He just walked behind everyone and cleared some stragglers. But finally, it was time, time to face the king. Or at least the king of the ants. Attention everyone! One particular strong ant is coming this way. Right before a claw could pierce the group's healer, a hand caught it and stopped Bera from killing him. A sneak attack? You're funny! Skriek! Ah, an ant with an attitude. Now I have seen it all. The king tried to slice Hades up in one go but was met with Hades catching his claws with his hand and pulling him closer. In one punch, Bera's head exploded and he died. There was no reason to postpone this fight and make it longer than it had to be. He was here to get some future generals for his army and then get out of there. Hades and Jinwa stayed back a while longer to destroy all the eggs and the rest of the ants. Jinwa managed to reach level 89 in one day. Truly, he was now a proud member of the S-ranked hunters. Now it was up to him to advance and get stronger. But Hades was certain that he would manage. You are leaving, aren't you? Jinwu asked him. Your senses have truly grown, since I saw you the first time, Jinwu. Why? Well, I have done the things I had to. The last thing will be done today and then it is time for me to move on. You are now here to take the job of protecting the earth. And I know you'll do a splendid job. I have left something for you when you reach level 100. What is it? It is mostly information on the history of this universe as well as something you will be able to use for a special someone. Jinwa was very emotional and it was hard for him to say goodbye. Goodbye Jinwu. Take care of your family for me and make sure to stay the way you are. Goodbye, Hades. Maybe we'll see each other again. Maybe Jinwo, maybe. And then Hades left. He had something to get for himself first before he killed the monarchs. And that was the rest of the Shadow Army of Ashbourne. Those were at least 100,000 soldiers that he could use. Finally you are here. I have been waiting here you know. You could have come sooner. But I guess no one likes to come to their death soon, Hades said to the two people who had just arrived out of another dimension. Oh? A human? And you have not yet passed out? Fascinating, the elf said. I am neither a human nor would such weak pressure make me pass out. And who might you be then? I am entropy, I am death, I am. Hades. Today you will die and I will go and kill all of your armies and then to the other monarchs and kill them too. All for the glorious purpose of having you serve me. Can you think of a more fulfilling job? The two monarchs got tense. When Hades started to speak, he released some of his mana and the two monarchs understood who this was. Shadow Monarch. Indeed. So are we going to stand here all day, or, hey where are you going? The Beast Monarch had used this chance to get away. He was not interested in fighting the Shadow Monarch this way. Ha, huh, that was unexpected. Are you also going to run away, Hades asked the Frost Monarch. We will see each other again, Shadow Monarch, I promise you Thaak. Hades stood in the same position but with something in his hands. The Frost Monarch looked at it and saw that it was, his heart. Hades had ripped out his heart and he hadn't even noticed him move. Don't think of getting away. You are dying today and that is absolute. Needless to say, the Frost Monarch died that day. Once again Hades used his powers over boundaries to create a shadow soldier out of the Frost Monarch. It was amazing to just go against what was believed to be possible. The hunt was on and Hades was impatient to play with his game. The second monarch to fall was the Beast Monarch. He tried to warn the other monarchs but didn't get the chance when Hades entered his dimension with his shadow army. Hades tried something else in this fight. He tried to use his six eyes. And it was glorious. 
his six eyes had adapted to all his power and grown tremendously. The use of energy was simple now and he could spam attacks left and right. He could do that before but now he was essentially not using more energy than he was generating. The beast monarch, like the beast he was, when pushed into a corner, fought with great intensity. But in the end, everything was useless. He fell and became another shadow soldier in Hades' army. The third monarch to face Hades was Kaeresha. The monarch of plagues, the queen of insects was just as he remembered, weak. It was funny to see Beres slice through his former brethren like it was nothing though. Kaeresha was weaker than the beast monarch and died even faster than he did. How sad for such esteemed powerhouses to just die at Hades' hands. He didn't even put them in his eyes, he would say if he was a young master. After Kaeresha, the monarch of Iron Body was next. The king of monstrous humanoids was an uninteresting opponent to fight. Just like all the other monarchs Hades had fought before him, he thought of himself as more than he was. Hades was quick to show him his place, as an eternal slave in his army. It was a very good way for Hades to get free help. Who would take care of the underworld when he wasn't around? They were perfect for that job and Hades would use them wisely. Yogamunt, the monarch of Transfiguration, the king of demonic specters and Legia, the monarch of the beginning, the king of giants were the last two before the final boss came. Hades had to travel into a dimension that was protected by the rulers to get to Legia, as he was already captured and chained. That made the hunt very boring but at this stage, Hades didn't care anymore. He just wanted to be done with this and go back home. Chapter 27 so many meetings. In a dark dimension where the sky is never blue and the air never clean and healthy we find our last obstacle that stops Hades from going back home. The rocks form a platform on which we find a throne. On this throne sits a handsome middle-aged man with long red hair, a neatly trimmed red beard and glowing red eyes. He also wore silver red armor with a high collar and a reddish brown tailcoat. This was the last of all the monarchs. The monarch of destruction, the king of dragons. He was sitting on his throne in this dimension that they had fled to after Hades had attacked the last time. Even though Hades wanted to get it over with he did not rush. He took his time and crushed everything in his path. Because he knew, sooner or later he will have them all and they shall all serve him. A dragon approached the monarch and told him news of the battlefield. My liege, the shadow army has arrived. Shall we move to somewhere further than where they are? No. I am tired of running away. True. The dragon army had fled from the moment they realized that Hades started to take out other monarchs. And while the monarch of destruction was the strongest monarch, on par with the shadow monarch, he did not underestimate the sheer number of shadow soldiers that were a part of Hades' army. It was a disgrace for him to flee from a fight or battlefield. But when you are faced with death, things start to come into perspective and the monarch of destruction knew that he was not ready for that end just yet. But now it was time to end things. He would face the shadow monarch and that would settle the war once and for all. Either he wins and the war is won, or he loses and... Well then that is that. He will see what the other side has in store for him. Foolish man. He didn't know that none of the monarchs had the privilege of laying to rest. They all had to work more as they had become generals in Hades' army. That was also why it was so easy to crush the armies of the other monarchs. They essentially had to fight more monarchs and no one had a chance. Hades had an easy time. He would normally not do anything except deal with the monarch and turn him into a shadow soldier. But it was now finally time. Time to end all this ridiculous cat and mouse game. Hades walked with his hand behind his back. He had found that his movements and behavior turned more and more elegant. He was starting to truly see himself for what he was. Hades the honored one, the wealthy the end, the lord over boundaries. And it was affecting his mannerisms. He would not get angry as fast or even at all, anymore. There were still things that made him angry but it was not something he experienced in the world of solo leveling. He could not get angry at the humans for they did what was expected of their race. He understood them as he was once one of them. 
that would come to be an important fact in the future. But we'll see that later. His mind has started to grow again since he had taken over again. When he was in the Jujutsu Kaisen world he had sealed almost 100% of his powers and that was why they didn't grow. He transcended his power level when he became the Honored One. In the solo leveling world, he created an avatar and didn't use his powers so he didn't progress. But now that he had taken over again, he could feel his progress, no matter how small it was. Hades walked through the battlefield. He knew where he was going. The Monarch of Destruction's energy was unmistakable. He stood before the throne and looked up. No need to be uncivilized. So you've come. I have. No more running. No more. We shall fight now and finish it. Fleeing serves no purpose. I'm glad you see it that way. What happened with Ashborn? Gone. I see. Before we fight we shall exchange names. My name is Antares. That is the name they. I go by Hades. Let us not dwell on the past and focus on the present. I agree. Looking at each other for a moment they felt the tension rise. For Antares that was. Hades had already seen the outcome of this battle and was ready for the attack he knew would come. This made Hades have a flashback to the day of the job change quest when he fought Igris. He crushed his commander then. And this fight, even though the opponent was far stronger, would be easier. Antares took out a long red sword from his, palm and attacked Hades with it. Hades ducked the swing. Antares attacked again with a swing from the left trying to slice Hades in two. However, that didn't work as Hades retreated from the sword's reach. The monarch gave chase and attacked Hades from all sides. The surroundings got cut and blown up by the intensity of their fight. Hades decided that it was enough disrespect now and took out his katana. He had begun to like it. But it was a bit short for his tastes. He preferred an otaki and he would try and find one in the future. Hmm, now that he thought about it, there is a place he will go to in the future that specializes in making all sorts of sorts and variations of them. And it would be perfect for him as it will be truly his. Hades blocked a swing from the angry dragon. He was unhappy that Hades did not see him as a threat and was not even fully focused. Antares opened his mouth and fired a jet of flames that destroyed everything in its path. Hades dodged the flames as his katana would not hold against those. He swung his blade and created a slash that traveled towards Antares. The monarch managed to dodge the slash but was caught off guard when Hades punched him in the face. Antares lost his balance and in the attempt to regain it, he did a flip. Hades increased the intensity of their fight until Antares was sweating from the pressure he was feeling. Hades still had his expressionless face. He was not impressed with this performance. You are stronger than the other monarchs. Not strong enough. Obviously. Let us finish it in one final attack. As you wish. Hades put his katana away and took out a spear. He wanted to try a new move. He pulled the spear back as far as he could. Antares was gathering a big ball of destruction and flames in his mouth. They both unleashed their attacks at the same time. A monstrous amount of flames was shot towards Hades. He simply looked at the flames and thrust his spear forward. The flames were extinguished from the inside and dissolved into the air. The monarch of destruction and king of dragons looked down at his body and saw a basketball-sized hole in his thorax. He looked up at Hades and smiled. I lose. I can move on and see what is on the other side. He closed his eyes. Everything became black. In the darkness, Antares heard a voice. Rise and serve. It was not a request but a command and he felt like it was coming from his king. He absolutely had to serve the person calling out to him. His eyes opened and he saw the situation he was in. He had become a shadow soldier and Hades was standing in front of him. What? Yet, yeah, no journey for you I'm afraid. You will serve me as a general of my armies and protector of my realm in the future. You managed to make a monarch into a shadow soldier? How? Well, it was not that hard honestly. 
I understood how you guys were made and then knew what to do to make you a shadow in my army. Rejoice for you have all your previous powers apart from being a shadow now. I feel so grateful that you made me a shadow. I want to serve you. How does that work? I am your king now. It's only natural. So, what now? Now, we go back to my world. It has been far too long since I left. You have family there, my liege. What? Who cares about my family? I'm talking about the underworld. A dimension that belongs to me and that I will shape and form into something glorious and amazing. And now I can finally go back. It was fun traveling to other worlds and I will definitely do it again, but the next one will not be for a few years. Hades called all his shadows back into his shadow. It was truly convenient to be able to do that. He sat down and left the dimension. He appeared on Earth and looked at what happened to it since he had left to deal with the monarchs. It would seem that the rulers had not yet realized that he had killed all the monarchs. Maybe he should tell them? Nah. The longer the gates appear, the longer Jinwoo can level up and grow stronger. There are other threats in the universe except the monarchs. None of them are as powerful as they were but there are still more. Hades focused and looked for Jinwoo. He saw him with his family in their apartment. It seemed like he had reached level 100 and had unlocked his gift. Hades gifted Jinwoo a batch of holy water of life to wake up his mother from her eternal slumber. Their father had not yet returned and was probably still, oh would you look at that. Still not going back. You are the one that gave my son that power. Was that a question? You made him strong. Was that another question? Why? Because I wanted to. You are the Shadow Monarch. I have been tasked with stopping you from merging with a body, by the rulers. And how's that going for you? Not well it would seem. Do me a favor. Don't tell them just yet. Let them use all the gates they have. It will make Jinwa stronger and he will be able to protect the earth in the future. And when all the gates have been cleared, tell Jinwa to use the last part of my present to change it all back ten years. I'll leave now. Take care of your family, I'll Wan. And with that said, Hades left the world of solo leveling for good. Chapter 28, Ideas Greetings dear reader. I am posting this chapter to ask for your ideas. I will spend some time creating the underworld and describe all the special features that can be found. I like to do that and it is non-egotable. I will spend as much time on it as I wish and I won't care about complaints at all. But you can input your ideas here and tell me what sort of ideas you have. I will see whether I can add them and hopefully we can form an amazing underworld. It does not have to be any particular style. There will be futuristic elements as well as old Japanese elements. We will see many different biomes but it will be kept magical and in the underworld theme. So please tell me your ideas. THX Chapter 29, Back Home Finally. I'm back. Hades floated in the air and looked down on the earth. Not different from the way he had just looked at the earth in the solo leveling. He was happy to be back now. It was time he got to work on the underworld. He had postponed it far too long. Hades stopped for a moment. He could feel the weight in the air. The heavy feeling, the smell of death. It was all around. It seemed like they were having trouble with the war. Interesting. Just as he said they would. But that was not his problem. He was here to claim what was rightfully his, the underworld. And so he made his way to where he could feel the opening to the underworld was it. He wanted to get started right away. Hades made his way to the right spot and felt something. A pull. A feeling that was calling out to him and telling him to come. That had to be the underworld. So without thinking, he entered and as soon as he entered the gateway to the underworld, he could feel how he had passed a barrier. He was the god of boundaries. So it was natural for him to feel something like that. He knew that he had left the dimension called Earth and had entered a new one. The pull got stronger and it seemed like the dimension was, happy? 
well, it made sense. He was the intended ruler of this dimension. It belonged to him, naturally it would be happy that he was here. The surroundings were harsh, to say the least. The air reeked of acid, poison, and death. There was pain and anguish that were all around and permeated the dimension. Due to the fact that it had been unclaimed all these years, the underworld was a chaotic place that seemed to be influenced by Tartarus. The feelings and energies that came from Tartarus were seeping through the connection that the two dimensions shared. But that didn't matter all that much. It was fine for Hades and he would deal with it soon. But for now, he had to get to the center and claim this place as his own. Hades walked and walked. It felt like an endless distance that he had to cross to get to the center of the dimensional. But that was not true. It only seemed that way because that was the defense mechanism. Those who were not welcome would forever wander and never reach the center. Hades would have to take the center of the dimension and do something special with it to protect it. But that was in the future. Hades stopped for a moment and took off his eye patch. He wanted to have a look at his dimension in its truest form. His six eyes were activated and he could see everything. Unlike what you saw when you used normal eyes, Hades could see all the energies and intricacies that were the underworld. And he only had one thing to say about it. It is, beautiful. Eh, he was biased. But it was truly a beauty. The energies that made up the underworld, while in a chaotic state right now, were truly marvelous. There were so many different types as well. And all of these energies, death, pain, chaos, suffering, reward, and many more, came together and formed the trademark energy signature of the dimension. But Hades knew that it wasn't complete yet. It would change once he connected to it and truly made it his. And no better time than the present to make it so. Following his senses he could see the center of the dimension and approached it. Without thinking he grabbed it. His vision turned black and he saw everything in the underworld at once. He could see everything and feel everything as well. It was truly gorgeous. After a moment, Hades stopped and smiled. It was perfect. I Hades, the god of death, the underworld, wealth, and boundaries, the honored one declare this dimension as mine and hereby claim ownership. Hades said this out loud for all of reality to hear. He had taken control of the underworld. It was now his and his alone. No one will be able to take it from him. Hades just stood there for a moment, letting this new feeling wash over him. He could feel the changes that had just occurred in the underworld settling. His divinity of boundaries truly changed the meta. The underworld would be nothing like in the stories or mythologies. It would be truly indestructible and unbreachable. The possibilities that he had now were endless. He had so many ideas on how to change it and what to add and he was giddy to begin. As he already stated, his inner mind crafter was acting up and desperate for some terraforming. But first, plans had to be made and his ideas had to be finalized. He had to make sure that all his ideas and wishes didn't conflict with one another. But there was little chance of that happening. Normally if you are a young god and you claim a dimension it takes time to integrate fully and have all the changes you want be done. Another thing that has to be thought of is that the space inside most dimensions was finite. They could be Jinn or Mouse, but they were finite. Now the underworld, was also finite. At least it was until Hades had just claimed it and his divinities of boundaries had taken effect here. Hades knew, that whenever he wanted to increase the size it would work. No matter what, everything and anything could be achieved here and it was all a blank canvas for him to paint on. What were some plans that Hades absolutely wanted in the underworld? Well to start off, Hades wanted to create something that would welcome a lot of inhabitants if they wanted to live here. He was in no way against staying here alone for eternity. Something this gracious was supposed to be shared, or at least envied. But Hades was not a charity. He was the god of the underworld and those who wanted to stay here and passed his requirements would be allowed to stay here. Of course, they had to contribute something to that. Now let's talk about the first order of business. The landscape. Hades will create several biomes, 
each with its own respective features and climates. He will make some of those biomes so big that they will appear to be entire worlds. Some of those biomes will serve as a housing biome where most people, gods and maybe demigods will stay and live. There will be different types of habitable biomes. Some of them will have a Japanese lifestyle and others will be futuristic with technology that makes everything easier. It is allowed for gods to have multiple housings. The base form of the underworld will be similar to the nether from Minecraft. It will have the same feel to it. Only it will be much more dangerous. This nether will be everywhere except the places he puts different biomes, like the housing biomes he just talked about. At every entrance of a biome, Hades will build portals that are connected to a subdimension. This subdimension will be called the highway as it will function as a highway. No matter where you want to go, with the highway you can get anywhere in the underworld. When you enter such a portal you will arrive in the highway dimension and from there you will find an assortment of vehicles and transportation of all kinds that take you wherever you wish. Hades has many ideas on how to make this highway better and more efficient as well as more enjoyable for everyone. Apart from housing and the highway, there will also be biomes that vary from lush magical forests to serene meadows to towering mountains and underwater realms. All of these biomes will not look like their siblings on Earth each will have their trademark underworld feeling to it and make them unique. Next up would be the inhabitants. Hades has no problem with monsters living and staying in the underworld, but he will not tolerate fighting of any kind. If there is a dispute, Hades will create special places where such problems will be handled accordingly. Monsters will be allowed to roam the biomes and create their own villages or habitats. They will be allowed to live and thrive for as long as they are peaceful and live in harmony with the environment and the other inhabitants. Apart from all those things, Hades wanted to add cultural goods as well. He had plans for museums and galleries. He wanted to build gardens and arenas. Most of all Hades wanted to create Japanese-style bathhouses and spas. A water garden interested him as well. Many more ideas floated in Hades' mind but he had to stop for the moment as he had guests. The surroundings got darker and the shadows flickered with life. Hades waited patiently for the two visitors to show themselves. He had felt them approaching and wanting to enter the underworld. He had allowed them entry as he saw no harm in letting them in. He was interested in their purpose here. Two figures became visible. From the shadows, a beautiful woman and a handsome man materialized. They stood before Hades and observed him for a while. Hades did the same to them as well. He wanted to see their strength and how much he would still need to reach their levels. Surprisingly he found them to be, different to him. They were powerful no doubt, but they were no threat to him in any way. There was on one hand his second wish coming in clutch. The wish stated that nothing could harm Hades if he considered that to be harmful to him. But there was more to his divinity over boundaries that made Hades special. It was something that could not be compared to other divinities. Greetings venerable guests. My name is Hades, welcome to the underworld. Chapter 30, Meeting Grand Uncle and Grand Aunt. Greetings venerable guests. My name is Hades, welcome to the underworld. The two looked at Hades for a while. It felt like they were trying to understand him. As if he was a species they had never seen before. Finally, after a while of silence, the woman talked. You say your name is Hades. I am Nyx, primordial of the night and this is my husband Erebus, primordial of darkness. Greetings Hades, Erebus said. It is my pleasure to meet you too. What brings you to the underworld today, Hades asked them. We have lived in the depths of Tartarus in my palace of the night for eons. Tonight we felt the underworld that has always been unclaimed, closed and getting claimed by someone. We were wondering who this was and have come to have a look, Nix told Hades. I see. Well, it is nice of you to come and welcome me to the underworld. I'm afraid there is nothing that I can offer you in terms of refreshments but I have only just gotten here. I will however make sure to change this in the future and make it as accommodating as possible for you, should you decide to visit. Hades was very courteous. 
he had changed over the years and his temper changed. He became more like a god and a being of his station. His mannerisms changed and became more elegant. Nonetheless, he had not gotten arrogant. He was still the same but just not as easily angered as he was before. If Zeus and Métis had done the same thing as they did when he left all those years ago and framed him, he would just cut Zeus' dick off and turn him into a woman or something. He will no longer tolerate any shit from anyone, but he will not go around killing everyone just because they said something bad about him or anything like that. There is no need for something like that, Hades. We truly only came here to see who it was that finally claimed the underworld, Erebus said. It felt like Erebus was not the one who had the pants on in that relationship. He felt much more relaxed and calm than his wife did. Although Nyx could be calm, it felt like there was a lot of danger and temper that was hidden behind that beautiful face. What my husband says is true. We were curious what manner of being had claimed. Though, surprisingly, it was you. I don't think I have ever seen you. And yet you have the feeling of one of Gaia's offspring. That would be correct. I am her grandson, to be specific. I was away, off-world so to speak for the last few years. But I am back now and have decided to claim the underworld and begin to transform and build here. Build? Erebus asked. You mean shape surely? Owners of dimensions don't build, they shape and form the environment as they wish, he explained. No, Lord Erebus. I mean build. I am an enthusiast in all things that are about building and shaping my dimension. I was planning the most essential things I wish to add before you arrived. I will use my own two hands and some of my abilities to build and shape the underworld. The two primordials were perplexed. That was beyond unusual. A god that willingly took the hard way and got his hands dirty to create something? That would make sense if his divinity was connected to the building or something. But for the god of death and the underworld to do that was highly unusual. If you would like, you may stay here for as long as you wish. I have nothing against two visitors. I will start with the groundwork and you may watch if that interests you. Another surprising thing for the two primordials. This had never happened. No god would allow others to watch as they work on their dimension. It was a very personal thing to do and yet here he was allowing them to watch as he began his work. In the end, the curiosity won over the arrogance and the two watched from a bit of a distance as Hades began his work. Hades closed his eyes. He could feel everything in his dimension. Every particle, atom, or subatomic particle was at his beck and call. He could shape and form everything as he liked. However, he did something else. He focused on his intention and his powers as well as the dimension listened. The ground started to change from its dead state into a dark red and occasional deep blue slash green color. Hades was forming the nether. Lava was created, different types of stone and nether rack as well and there were even fungi made of spiacal wood that were covered with red and blue leaves. This was the beginning. Now he would begin to change everything. First, like every Minecraft run, he began to punch a fungi. He got one wooden log from it. He punched another junk and got another log from that as well. After he was done with this, he created four planks out of them. Using those planks, he made a crafting table. This little wonder would be the essential tool he would need to craft different building blocks. Hades got back to punching the fungi. He got another two wooden logs and made four sticks out of them. Then he used the crafting table for the first time. He placed two sticks above the other and then put three wooden planks horizontally above them. This created a wooden pickaxe. Hades had a smile on his face that threatened to split his face in two. He was living the dream right now. A real-life Minecraft experience. What more did you want? After he had created the wooden pickaxe, Hades got nether rack and made a stone pickaxe as well as a stone axe. He made the rest of the tools as well and began to dig down. Unlike a normal nether, the underworld was special. Here you could find many many more ores and materials than in normal Minecraft. There was gold, silver, platinum, iron, and more. 
but there were more valuable metals such as adamantium, yes he had adamantium spawn in the underworld. But that was not all. There was also vibranium, promethium, inertron, quantum steel, smart skin, amazonium, supermanium, eighth metal, element X, carbonadium, adamantin, URU, antimetal as well as nth metal. However, however not all of those metals were able to be gathered or even found. They were something that only Hades had access to. He didn't want to make the underworld more dangerous than it had to be. Hades began creating an entrance for a mine shaft from where he would gather all the materials he would need for his very first project, the highway. It was the first thing he would focus on, but only for a while. What he wanted to do was to build a foundation and then create the first building in the center of the underworld. He had to have a palace but was not willing to create his residence inside the underworld slash nether. He had plans to have his private quarters and lab as well as everything else that was very personal, in the end. Yes. Hades was planning on creating the end. But unlike the end from Minecraft, Hades would create it from scratch. It was going to be the void itself. Nothing will exist there except him and all his belongings. To create this end, he will have to create a sub-dimension that will be anchored inside the palace which will be located in the center of the underworld. To start all those projects though, Hades needed materials. He could of course simply make them appear or just create the palace out of thin air, but that wasn't something he wanted. He will build this with his hands and that was that. The entrance to the mine shaft was finished for now. He will make it look better later on but for now it would do. He then began to dig down to gather all sorts of stone and other ores. His inventory was unlimited. That was something that he thought was important as he did not want to travel back and forth too many times. Nix and Erebus were still watching the young god doing its thing. They could not find the right words to describe what they were seeing. First this godling chagged the landscape and created living trees or fungi and then he began to punch them and got small blocks of wood. Then he made some form of magical table that could assemble objects if you give it the rare hub materials. They watched as Hades got his hands dirty and really used his tools to dig up the ground AD and gather more materials to then build things. He was very skilled in the way handled things and it was beautiful how he decorated that, mine shaft, as he called it. The husband and wife forgot what they were doing and simply watched Hades work. But then sometime during his digging, they felt something. It seemed like Hades might not have any more time to build in the near future. Someone had arrived and was waiting for Hades to let her in. As Hades got more and more stone and nether rack, he was in his element. He forgot everything around him and only focused on the task at hand. This was what he loved to do. The underworld would be glorious and he will have built it all on his own. As he was going about it, he could feel a cock at the entrance of the underworld. This being could not enter uninvited and Hades had full control so it was impossible for Hades being to come in, no matter how powerful it might have been. Ha, it seems like I won't be able to finish here any time soon. But maybe I can make it quick and then get back here to continue. Hades allowed the presence to enter the underworld and not one second after that, a woman stood before him. She wore green robes that left her arms and legs free. She had brown hair and smelled of nature. Hades knew who she was inside. It seemed like he would have to see his siblings again. However he would take his time. He had nothing OT gain from the war and would play by his own rules. No matter how powerful Gaia thought she was, he would still destroy her consciousness and live his life like nothing happened. Greeting's Grandmother What brings you here today? Chapter 31 I'm a man of my word. Greetings grandmother. What brings you here today? Hades looked at his grandmother, Gaia. She was a beauty in his opinion. Her presence was soothing and he could smell grass and trees from her. Had Hades not been as powerful as he was, he might have been influenced by her aura and let down her guard. But he was immune to such effects and was ready for anything that might happen. He had never talked with Gaia and was curious about what sort of woman she was in this universe. He knew about her from Greek mythology. 
Their Gaia is typically depicted as a maternal figure, often shown as a woman, and she is associated with the natural world, fertility, and the cycle of life and death. One of Gaia's notable actions was her involvement in the overthrow of Uranus by her Titan children, who were fathered by Uranus. Gaia helped her children, such as Cronus, rebel against Uranus, leading to a significant shift in the balance of power among the gods. And now, well she helped Rhea hide Zeus when he was born. This had to mean that she was interested in having Kronos taken from the throne, no? He did know that Gaia was not happy about the imprisonment of most of her children by the Olympians. Hades didn't particularly care about the Titans and he would leave them be if it was up to him. But Kronos had to be removed from the throne. Where he went after that? You are one of my grandchildren. Children of Rhea and Kronos. Is that a question? No. I was merely stating a fact. I see. Well, you are correct. Hades, you have claimed the underworld as your domain it would seem. Why are you not fighting in the Titanomachy? Where have you been all this time? I was traveling if you will. Gaia narrowed her eyes and looked at Hades less calmly. What? Traveling. I went to see other worlds to gather experience and good memories. So you let your siblings and allies fight in the Titanomachy on their own, because what? You didn't feel like helping. Gaia was no longer speaking calmly. She was not yet screaming but her voice had gotten louder. There is no reason to shout grandmother. We can talk in a normal way, no. Don't patronize me, boy. It is your responsibility to help your siblings in this war. The Titanomachy has to be won and all these years it went abysmal. What's more, it is getting worse and worse. The Titanomachy should have already been over by now. And now I find out that you have abandoned your family and simply enjoyed your time. By now Gaia was screaming. Hades did not take lightly to be screamed at like that. And what's more, inside his home. And what's even more, when he was actually innocent. He took a deep breath before he began to speak. Inhale exhale. Your worry for your family is commendable. However, no one comes to my home and begins to shout lies in my face. I understand that you might not know the truth of the matter, but you should first find out the truth before judging something. Now, if that was all then you may leave again. To be honest I am disappointed. I was not expecting you who are so old and have been around for so long to act like a petulant child. Next time you speak to me that way in my own home, I will do some judgment of my own, and you won't like it, believe that." Gaia was silent. No one had ever talked to her that way. Not even Uranus with whom she had many children. And yet this young little godling dared to speak with her that way. Fascinating. Nix and Erebus were still there and watched the exchange happen. They were interested as well in why Hades was here and did not help his siblings win the war. The way it was going, it would probably end in the victory of the Titans. But destiny and fate were desperately trying to see their future come true. They were working non-stop to stop the Titans from winning. The two primordials were interested to find out why Hades had left and didn't help them. In the small amount of time that they knew him, they could tell that he was not hostile to everyone. They thought that he must have a reason for his decision not to help them. Hades had used some of his power when speaking with Gaia just now. And she could feel that he was a strong god, a very strong god. It didn't matter how old someone was, as long as he was strong, he would be respected. That was the most important law that every being follows whether it wants to or not. And Hades was strong. He was not yet at the level of primordials in terms of pure energy output, but his versatility which his divinity of boundaries as well as his second wish grants him, was the reason why he was stronger than the normal gods by a long shot. He was already beyond the level of a god-king and he was getting stronger the more time passed. The divinity of boundaries was an ultra-hax that needed understanding but Hades had nothing if not time and he would probably soon approach the level of primordials. Gaia kept quiet for a moment and observed Hades. She had lost her cool for a moment and it would seem the little god did not take that lightly. 
she was surprised at his power and understood that that was not all there was. The way this god controlled his energy was impressive. Gaia thought about it for a moment. She was quick to anger right there. And she never allowed him to explain himself. Explain then why you are not beside your siblings and the Olympians to fight the Titans. I don't explain myself. I do not need to. Then please, at least tell me why you are seemingly against fighting the Titans, Gaia said a lot more softly. I am not against fighting the Titans. They mean nothing to me. Then why are you not fighting? Don't you want to secure the future of your fam? She stopped talking mid-sentence. Hades was passively looking at her. She noticed his expression change ever so slightly when she accused him of simply hiding and not helping his siblings. I see. It's not the Titans, but the Olympians that you have a problem with, Gaia concluded. Indeed. Would you tell me what that might be? I have no problem telling you what my problem with them is. But let us sit down for this as it is a rather long tale. Hades said and took out his crafting table and quickly used gold to create four chairs and a table as well as a pot of tea and four cups. Hades then used his divinity to make the metal chairs feel like soft wool. Impressive. Why do you use this weird tool to create this? I love to build things and this is just me doing what I like. It makes you realize and appreciate the things you do when you do it with your own two hands instead of just making them appear. That's just the way I am. Gaia was interested now. This was a god, unlike anyone she had seen her entire life. But she had to observe him more and she was sure to do that. The story starts a few hundred years ago. The day I was born and got my name, Hades. Kronos ate me and granted me the agonizing time traveling down his esophagus. I don't say that it hurt but it was boring and the fact that Kronos has a divinity of time made things worse. Over the years, the three primordials sat in their seats, drinking tea and listening to his story. Hades told them about his life in this world. He began with his descent down Kronos' esophagus, followed by his falling in his father's stomach and then trying to find a place to stay out of the acidic gastric fluids. The long time he spent alone there and focused on his divinities to spend the time and grow more powerful. How he did manage to break free from the oppressive aura he felt from his father. The way his boundary manipulation grew stronger the longer he involved himself with it. Hades told them about the first time he saw the boundaries that existed all around us by chance and how it changed his perception towards reality. He told them many things and also a lot of half-truths. For example, he already knew about other realities and universes existing but when he saw all the boundaries with his own eyes, he was truly surprised. So a half-truth. Hades then continued to tell them how Hestia had arrived and he felt her power trying to bond with him. He told them about his fear of such bonds that he might not get out of them and that they might be used against him. He told them how he fled from his responsibility and saw new worlds. He of course didn't tell them that they weren't from this universe. That was not for anyone to know except him. He told them how he had grown over the years and lost someone important to him. After all the things that happened and how he had taken revenge on the man who killed his loved one, he told them how he got back the exact moment he had left and tried to make things right with Hestia. And lastly, he told them how he spent six plus million years with his sisters and brother and tried to raise them and how he had evidently failed. The last thing he told the three primordials was of course what happened on the island when Poseidon came back worried because he had tried to bed one of Oceanus' daughters and their hiding place was found out through that. How Zeus and Metis were very quick to blame him. How everyone seemingly wanted to send me to them and have me pay for someone else's mistake and how I snapped and then left to leave them to their fate. So you almost told them that they would beg for you to come back when you left, Nix asked. I did. I have to say, that is an amazingly cool way to leave the scene, Erebus said with admiration in his eyes. Yep, you could see who had the pants on in that relationship. Nix glared at her husband and shrunk into his chair. Oh my! Who would have thought that a primordial was an M? She had to be really good behind the curtains. I see, Gaia said after a moment of contemplation. Yes. 
It is obvious then. You will not help them on your own and that leaves me with only one option. I apologize for acting without thinking before. I understand the situation now. If you would please excuse me, I shall take my leave. After that, she stood up and vanished from the underworld. She was correct, he would never help them on his own. The only way he would ever consider helping them was when they did what he told them. They would beg for his help and then he would punish his brother and then think ayo but it. He was a man of his word after all. Well, what are your plans then Nix and Erebus? Hmm. I shall continue to watch your work on the underworld. I am interested to see how you continue and what your plans are. The same for me, Erebus said. Haha, in that case, I shall get back to work. Chapter 32, They Begged Gaia POV After meeting the young godling, no. Hades After meeting Hades I have understood that there is a chance for Rhea's youngest to turn out just like his father did. I love all my offspring, but Kronos has gotten off trail and lost his way. He no longer understands what is truly important. He drinks himself to sleep, R asterisk pees his sister in front of all the other titans, rules with fear and is not even good at it. He cares for the world no more and that is dangerous. I helped Rhea when she had her last child. I could see that my daughter would completely break otherwise. The trick with the stone was not a particularly good one, but it worked. Another reason for the fall of Kronos. Something like this should not be able to fool anyone, let alone the King of Titans. She understood that it was time to change things and Korans had no part in that future. So she waited and watched the young god grow up and get stronger. She saw his arrogance and thought it to be normal. Which god wasn't arrogant to some degree. But now, after she had heard the entire story from Hades, now she feared that they were in the process of replacing one tyrant with another one. And that couldn't happen. She had to make sure that the future god-king didn't derail from his path. She was not allowed to interfere too much, but she had to do something otherwise things would repeat themselves. And having Zeus apologize to Hades and beg him to help them will do him good. Métis POV we were currently inside our war tent, discussing strategies to win this war. Although it would have been better to say we were trying to stay in this war and not lose any time soon. It was not going well. It was apparent that we were missing something that helped us win. Métis understood what that something was long ago. They stood no chance without the oldest brother of the Olympians. And the time this was clear the most was when they freed the Cyclops and Hecantakirs from Tartarus. It took them so much longer than expected to free them and win against camp. And the state Zeus and Poseidon were in, when they returned was terrible. They had almost died in the fight and had gotten lost multiple times in the underworld. Everyone looked worse for wear right now. Zeus had lost his shine that pulled all the ladies towards him. Not even Hera was trying to get closer to him at the moment and it seemed, like Zeus was bothered by that the most. That doesn't mean that he wasn't bothered by losing time and time again. The members of their side were dwindling the longer this war took. No new titans were willing to join their side. Rhea and Hestia had been captured. It seemed Kronos was not as stupid and incompetent as everyone thought. He had removed two threats from the board and those were important pieces. Both Rhea and Hestia had divinities that could help the family and boost morale. But now that they were no longer there to cheer the others up. This is getting frustrating, said Poseidon. I agree. What are we going to do now, Demeter asked. Zeus slammed his hand on the armrest of his chair. He was angry. He was ridiculed by his father and other titans whenever they saw him on the battlefield. We shall strike them where it hurts the most. We will take them out one by one. And how are we going to do that? We need a lot of manpower to free your mother and sister, I added. Zeus had a remarkable mind for fighting and his instincts were very good. But in terms of logic, I was still the one doing the plans. We stop trying to save both of them and begin really trying to win, Zeus said. What? They are suffering. I'm sure that they need our help as Sue. 
enough. That doesn't matter now. I will kill Kronos and end this war. We must act quickly now. No one dared to say anything. Zeus was their leader so to speak and while Matisse would have been happy about that any other day, right now, they needed someone to tell him that such an act was cruel and unnecessary. But maybe, this was good? Maybe they could hit Kronos with something that he didn't expect and therefore catch him off guard. The tent flung open and someone entered. The air changed suddenly and I looked towards the person that had entered. And when I saw who it was I immediately bent my knee. My lady. Welcome to our camp. What brings you here today? Standing before them was Mother Earth herself, Gaia. The fact that she came here could only mean bad things. I have come today because things must start to change right now or you will lose this war. As I feared, it was bad news for them. But what to do? Lady Gaia, what can we do? Are you capable of lending us any help? No. That is not possible. I cannot interfere directly. But there is something that has come to my attention just today. What is that Lady Gaia, I asked her. Was it good news? Was there a loophole that let her help us? I found the underworld to be claimed just yesterday. Interested who this might be I went to see and imagine my surprise to find a young god there. Please don't be who I think it is. Please don't be who I think it is. Please don't be who I think it is. He goes by the name Hades, Gaia continued. F asterisk CK. And he told me an interesting tale about attempted R asterisk PE and accusations that were entirely false. Do you have anything to say about that? Zeus? Poseidon? Gulp. The pressure was breathtaking, literally. No one could breathe right now. It was clear that Gaia was angry and not for no reason. They had messed up back then. And now it was biting them in the ass. You have killed and almost lost the war with your foolish actions and for what? For pride? Because of your arrogance and fear. You will right this wrong and pray that he will be lenient enough to help your side. Because otherwise, you will lose this war and Kronos will make you all slaves to be tormented inside Tartarus forever. After saying that, Gaia finally left, leaving them all alone in the tent. I think she is right Zeus. We have to apologize to Hades and then hope he comes back and helps us with the war. We could use his help, Poseidon said. And what could one more god do? We are not losing on numbers, at least before we didn't. We can't use a coward such as Hades that just leaves us behind. He fled because he is scared, Zeus said. That's not true. Hades is not scared. He left because you blamed him for something he didn't do, Demeter said. She had regrets about how things went back then. She should have stood up for her brother but she didn't. Besides, Hades is strong. You don't know because you weren't there but Hades is powerful and he even trained Demeter and Hestia back when we were inside Kronos' stomach. It was Hera who surprisingly said that but she still remembered how she felt when Hades was in the stomach. His dangerous vibe and powerful aura made her want to flee behind someone. And how she wished he helped them carry this burden now. I refuse. There is no way I will ever beg that guy to help us. I'd rather die than do that. We will die if you don't do that. We did not think things through back then and I will also apologize to Hades, I said. It was also partially my fault. Yes only partially. After all, who did he think he was trying to be king? Zeus was the rightful king and nothing would change that. The meeting was postponed for the moment and everyone returned to their tents to get some sleep and get some energy back. I was sitting on the bed next to Zeus. It was time to tell him some things. I won't do it, Zeus said. This time it was spoken silently. He was not as arrogant in my presence. We still had not had intercourse yet. We were trying to wait until after the war. It was hard in the beginning as Zeus is an unbelievably attractive god and his allure is out of this world. But we had less and less energy when going to bed over the years. The war took a lot out of us. I understand why you don't want to do it. 
but no one said that you have to mean it. What? Think about it. You will go and apologize to Hades, to satiate his thirst for recognition, while in truth you won't mean any word of it. You will prepare for the final strike and then win the war and become the king of gods. Zeus understood what she was talking about and his eyes brightened up. It seems he liked the idea. Yes, we will let him have his arrogance and then deal the blow and take away the throne afterwards. And then we shall finally marry. Yes. Author POV Hades had gathered enough materials by now to begin Project Highway. The plans for the basics of the underworld were already inside his head, ready to be unleashed and built. He took out seven obsidian from his inventory and got ready to create a portal. He had changed obsidian from the amorph and weak material that it was to something truly sturdy and powerful. It took a long time to mine it, if you weren't Hades himself. But for the sake of the experience, Hades made it so that he had to take time to mine it as well. He was a mine crafter, not a cheater, let's not talk about this anymore. However just as he was about to begin building the portal, Hades felt someone trying to enter the underworld. He put the blocks away and arrived at the entrance of the underworld. He opened it and was surprised at what he saw. Standing there in front of his dimension were his siblings, well almost all of them. It seemed Hestia could not make it or was captured, oh well. Hades, Zeus started to speak. Well what do you know, you did come to beg. These POVs are important and I will continue to use them from time to time. We see how characters think in the story and that helps us understand them. We don't have to like them, but we must at least understand them. Now you understand more about Métis and a bit about Gaia. Chapter 33, Punishment Hades opened the underworld and was surprised at what he saw. Standing there in front of his dimension were his siblings, well almost all of them. It seemed Hestia could not make it or was captured, oh well. Hades, Zeus started to speak. Well what do you know, you did come to beg. Hades looked at each of his siblings and saw regret in some of their eyes. However only in some of them. In the others, he could see something else. Zeus and Métis. It's those two again. It would seem that someone believes himself to be more important than they were. Greed is a very bad motivator and if things went on this way, he might have to remove Zeus from the Greek pantheon. Hades POV They haven't changed much. Zeus is still the arrogant, philanderer, greedy wannabe king that thinks with his penis instead of his head. War hasn't given him any form of wisdom. Or did it? Maybe I was just different? I did spend many years tempering my will and powers and living life more than once. I thought I had matured after the wizarding world, but I was still naive and prone to anger. I had not yet become a god in mind and spirit. I don't regret the punch I gave Zeus back then before I left and said the badass line. No, he needed that. But I'm not sure I would handle the situation similarly. Hades we have come to ask for your forgiveness. We are sorry about how things went all those years ago and would like to make amends, Zeus started to speak. No, I am sure I wouldn't handle the situation similarly. I would probably either cut off his testicles, turn him into a woman that still likes women and then send make him mortal to have him experience life among horny men, or simply kill him. I wouldn't let anyone shit over me like he did back then. And Métis that greedy little schemer, would have what she deserves a similar experience as we did in the stomach of the one you thought loved you. If you would please help us as a brother should we would be, grateful. Is he even trying to make it believable? He is not really doing a good job. Should have worked on that speech in front of the mirror before making a fool of himself in front of me. Hades. I know I have not acted as it is expected of a king back then and. I believe that we can still make things right between us. I promise to hold you in the highest regard when we win the war. I. He is still going on. How do you bench press this much bullsh asterisk t? His head must feel like a mountain. Where is all of that crap coming from? A mystery that will make the most brilliant of minds clueless. And when we achieve that glory we shall. 
My god the amount of shit he is trying to make me swallow could feed the entire planet. So what do you say, Zeus had finally finished. He had a proud smile on his face. He looked like he had delivered a great speech and had convinced his brother, yeah about that. Hades looked at him with a strange expression. He was not saying anything and it seemed like he was daydreaming or something. Hera was the one to end the uncomfortable silence. Hades? Are you listening, she said. What? Did you say something? A vein popped on Zeus' forehead. It seemed Hades had not listened to a word he said. And he even went out of his way to give that speech. How dare he? You're probably thinking something along the lines of, how dare he treat me that way? I will show him, whatever whatever. You are still the same Zeus. Nothing has changed and I am happy as well as a bit disappointed that something can go so wrong. You should be lucky your dignity is lightning so that your sperm was the fastest, you wouldn't have made it otherwise. I mean look at this. Poseidon seems to truly be ready to ask for forgiveness, Demeter is sorry about not being brave enough to stand up to everyone and even Hera the proudest of all my sisters is willing to make amends. And yet you the youngest and most inexperienced of the Olympians believe yourself to be fit to rule. Your arrogance is clouding your judgment and your hormones are running wild. Take a moment Zeus and think about it. Do you truly believe that you stand any form of chance to win this war? Can you honestly tell me that you are this arrogant to think that you have even the slightest chance of winning against Kronos? Zeus said nothing he was far too embarrassed and especially angry to say something. Everything that Hades said was an insult and hit him right where it hurt. You can't answer that, can you? You are still far too high on your cloud. Maybe it is time to humble you. Are you that far gone already that all of this hasn't taught you anything? Let me guess, father insults you whenever you fight and tells you how weak you are and to prove yourself, you do exactly what he wants and try to go through the wall with your head. Tell me Zeus, why should I help you? Zeus had his fists clenched. He was looking at the ground and was biting his teeth really hard. His anger was threatening to explode. But he had made a plan with Métis. He could not lose control now. He had to make it appear like he was sorry. I'm, sorry, he managed to get out. You're a fool if you believe I buy that and it seems that you desperately need someone to show you your place, Hades said. Author POV the air changed around Hades. He let some of his aura go and let it saturate the air. His power pressured the Olympians, particularly Zeus. Hades was not messing around anymore. This was serious and he would kill Zeus should he not come around right now. He could not deal with Zeus as he did with other human beings or gods. He was an animal and that is how Hades would treat him. Hades brought his hand up very slowly and pointed at Zeus. He was prepared to kill him and be done with it. Why should he bother with his foolish brother any longer? He had his chance, saw what happened when he messed up and was even now trying to trick him. Wait, someone said. Hades stopped and saw Poseidon standing in front of Zeus. It seemed like his brother had matured. He was now prepared to protect his brother in the face of others. Good. Please. Hades. Don't kill him. It was my fault all those years ago, you know it was me and... I'm sorry that I, didn't dare to admit it back then. I, was a coward. So please don't kill Zeus, I hold just as much blame as he does. Yes. Please don't kill him, brother. He was wrong to blame you and I was wrong to not stand up for you, but I beg of you, we have already lost Hestia. Please don't take Zeus from us as well, Demeter said. She also matured. And she cared about Hestia a great deal. That's good then. That only left. Hera also walked and stood in front of Zeus. She had her usual face but this time there was regret also seen on it. I never appreciated you, even though you tried to help me and take care of me. But now you are wrong. Killing Zeus is not going to make things right. If you kill him, you will have to kill me as well, Hera said. Don't tempt me, Hera. 
Hades looked at all of them. It seemed like. It seems like you all matured quite a bit. The war must have had its good as well. I accept. I won't kill you Zeus, Hades said and slowly lowered his arm. The others sighed a sigh of relief. However, a punishment will be delivered. Gasp. The others who thought that it was over now, gasped and looked at Hades in premonition. For your arrogance and unwillingness to seek forgiveness, for your greed and for your insolence to show yourself in front of me with that excuse of an apology, I curse you. I curse you with the curse of Democles. You will lose that which you value most right now. From this moment on you will feel the edge of the curse floating over you and taking a hold of you whenever you even think of the thing that will be taken away from you now. When Hades finished speaking the world shifted and the curse took effect. Reality bent to his will and did what he wished. And then... Zeus began to scream and held his loin. And after a moment something golden flowed through his fingers and fell to the ground. Blood. Author POV. What happened, Hera asked. Zeus? What's going on, Poseidon screamed. Brother? You, you're bleeding. What is this, Demeter also screamed. However, they were not the ones who were the most scared. While Zeus was screaming like an infant, Metis was terrified and ran to him. She had tears in her eyes and screamed as well. Zeus. Zeus. Love. What is it? Why are you bleeding? What happened? Please answer me. She tried to help him, somehow, in any way, but it was for naught. He was in far too much pain and rolled on the ground while blood continued to flow from his loin. Something was bleeding down there, but what? Métis turned to Hades with a livid expression. She was beyond angry now. Without thinking she attacked him and tried to punch him. You. It was you. What did you do? Answer me. She swung her fist towards him with everything she got. Her anger clouded her judgment and she didn't think about her actions. It didn't matter right now. Her love was in pain and the person responsible was standing right there. She would punish him. Métis' fist got closer and closer to Hades' face. He had a bored look on his face while everything happened. In the beginning when Zeus started to scream he initially thought it was funny but when everyone began to scream like a headless chicken, and then the woman even attacked him, well, it wasn't funny anymore. Just as Métis' fist was about to make contact with his face, her vision turned dark and she fell to the ground. You had better remember your place, trash. That was the last thing she heard before she lost consciousness. Chapter 34, Beg Just as Métis' fist was about to make contact with his face, her vision turned dark and she fell to the ground. You had better remember your place, trash. Look at all of you, Hades said as he watched his siblings being powerless to do anything. All of you act like children in the face of what they perceive to be an impossible task, like climbing on a chair. You are all useless and to think that I taught you, Demeter. Truly disappointing. What's happening to Zeus? Why is he in so much pain, Hera said. Hera, out of all my siblings you are the one I have no words for. You could bleed out right in front of me, and I would walk by like nothing happened. And now that you saw what I could do, now that you got a glimpse of what you could have achieved had you put your useless fear aside and let me train you, now you come to me and ask me what happened. It should be perfectly obvious what happened. You all were present. Hades looked at his siblings. He had nothing but disgust on his face. Unlike the ghost of the Uchiha, Hades was not disgusted by weakness, he was disgusted by someone who stayed weak even after all this time. None of his siblings had truly gotten strong. You are all weak, even after all this time, you are embarrassing yourselves here, Hades said. Poseidon was getting angry. He started to shout at Hades with tears in his eyes. We're not weak. We have been fighting a war against the Titans for years now and we have become strong, while you hid somewhere out of fear. You are the weak one here. Hades looked at his brother with apathy. Look at you, 
crying and screaming. Strength is not determined by your muscles alone, you imbecile. Grown men and women fight with their heads. That's where the real battle is. And if you can't keep your emotions in check in circumstances such as this, then you are weak. I have no patience for weights on my legs, for they might break my legs. And at the moment, you are all acting like weights. So ask yourselves, do you want to be weights? Or do you want to stand up and take your life into your own hands? Get a grip on yourselves and stop crying for heaven's sake, Hades continued. He was not done with them. Not by a long shot. He was about to tell them all he had to say about their mistakes. Zeus was still in pain. He was still bleeding and could not understand what was going on around him. Why was he in so much pain? What did Hades do? He looked up and while gritting his teeth tried to see his siblings. Hera had his head in her lap and Poseidon was standing in front of him and talking with Hades. Demeter, she was looking at someone lying on the ground. Matis. Why was she on the ground? What happened? He should not have made such a plan. Somehow Hades had grown powerful and learned foul magic. That curse had cut him, oh no. Look at that. Are you still alive Zeus? Hades asked Zeus who had just stopped screaming in pain. He was still in pain but he was keeping it in check. It seems like you understand what happened then yes. Zeus looked at Hades for a moment. He had trouble keeping up with the words that came out of Hades' mouth. Why yes. Good. What did happen? Please tell us now, Demeter asked Hades. It seemed she was nearing her breaking point. She was never one of strong mental fortitudes. Sigh all right. Even though you were all present when I cursed Zeus. It happened as you saw. I cursed Zeus with the curse of Democles. What this means is that Zeus will get something taken away from him and for as long as the curse remains, should he think about the thing that was taken from him, the curse will act up again and strike again. In the case of Zeus, it was his testicles and penis. So the thing that you wanted most was intercourse it would seem. Interesting indeed. But understandable during a war that lasts as long as this one did. The others seemed to understand what he said. Of course, they understood that the thing Zeus craved right now had to be intercourse to relieve himself of some stress. They all had that. What happens now? asked Hera. Will he, grow it back? Of course it will. Zeus is still a god. The curse won't hold that long and as soon as it is finished, everything will revert back to the way it was before. Hades looked at Zeus. He saw that he had dealt a strong blow to him and his pride was greatly damaged. However, that was not enough. Still, there was something that was needed before Hades was satisfied. Then, then will you, finally help us now? Are you going to help us in the war? Demeter asked with a weak voice. No. What? Please, brother. I beg of you. Punish me however you want but please help us. Hestia and mother have been captured for weeks now and I am afraid of what the Titans and especially father will do to them. I beg you please brother, please help us. Demeter at this point had lost the fight and had begun crying. Tears were flowing down her face. She was kneeling in front of Hades and held his hands. Hades pulled her up and made her stand. That is not what I want sister. I am not perverse prick in need of people begging me and kneeling in front of me. I am not cruel like that. What I said that day when I left, what was that? Demeter brushed the tears out of her face. She knew what he is talking about. What did I say, Demeter? Poseidon? Hera. You said. You will beg. Exactly. You will beg. And I did not say it to you Demeter, nor to you. Poseidon and not even to you, Hera. No, I said it to you. Zeus. And that is what it will take for me to help you fight this war. You will beg and nothing will change that. So go ahead, beg. Wano. Hades. Zeus is injured. You can't expect him to do this in his state. 
Have you no honor? Are you such a scum to ask this of him right now? You are embarrassing, you are nothing. Do you think we are arrogant? Look at you. You hypocrite talk a lot if the day is long but you are nothing more than a coward. Hira was not as apprehensive as she was before. She was angry and scared and she was not prepared for such a situation when she heard that they would see their brother again. Hades did not care about her right now. He was looking at Zeus. They were looking each other in the eyes and at that moment Zeus understood that he had to beg. They would lose this war otherwise and then, he would never be king and he would never be able to bed all those women. Zeus POV. Beg, was all Hades said once again. Slowly and in great pain, he got up from Hera's lap. I used a lot of strength to do that. After that, I turned to the side and used one hand to push myself off the ground. Hera's and Poseidon's hands were brushed away. I would do this by myself. I bit through the pain and managed to stand upright. I took one step after the other while holding my loin. I would not make a sound. I would not give him the satisfaction he wants. No, I will do this now. For the war and for my throne I will beg now. I got in front of Hades and then slowly got on my knees. I looked on the ground and then said the words I never thought would come out of my mouth. Please. Hades, please help us. I beg you. I waited for a moment and then repeated once more. I beg. You. Please help us. It was silent for a moment and Hades didn't respond. I looked up to him and looked him in the eyes. He had the same impassive face, that I had grown to hate already. I accept. I shall help you in this war. I hope you learn something, Zeus. Oh, I learned something. Brother. I learned to conceal my true motives until the very end. I will make you suffer mark my words. I will have my revenge and that is absolute. Nothing can change my mind. The embarrassment and humiliation you have given me today will be returned a thousandfold. That I swear. Hades POV. I can see you brother, you can't hide from me. I can see your true face and will always know what you think. There is nothing you can surprise me with. And when you do try to go against me or double cross me or try to take something that's mine or try any other method to hurt me. I will be there and rain down fire upon you. I shall turn you into a woman and make you mortal. I will then take away your memories and set you down somewhere and have you experience mortal life as a woman. I have so many ideas on how to deal with you that it makes my fingers twitch. But I must be patient and wait for your revenge. At least it will be funny, to see you dance like a puppet. Chapter 35, War I Third Person POV Hades and his siblings were standing in the war tent. After accepting Zeus' beg, Hades first had to go back to the underworld and tell both Nyx and Erebus that he would return in a few days to continue, but first, he had to win a war. Flashback so you're leaving to fight in the war alongside your siblings then, Erebus asked. No. No? But I thought you just said that, Erebus continued. You're not listening to him, Erebus. He never said he'd fight alongside his siblings, Nix said. Hmm, Erebus didn't seem to understand. How was he a primordial? Nix is right. I never said I'd fight alongside those driveling wimps. I will win the war and be back in a couple of days. And then I'll continue working on the underworld. I'll see you then. Hades saluted them and slowly faded out of existence. You know, he truly has the best exits and coolest lines of any god I've seen to date, Erebus said after a moment of silence. Ugh, Nyx rolled her eyes and then also left to go back to the night palace. What? He's cool. Don't tell me you don't think so too, Erebus tried to explain himself. Nix? Hello. Flashback end. So now they were all standing in the war tent together with other titans that were still on their side. Among those were Themis, Prometheus, his brother Epimetheus and surprisingly the female titan Hecate. Originally Oceanus also wanted to join the Olympians' side, 
but when he saw how the war was progressing he decided to stay neutral. That was a hard blow for them as they lost a strong ally. Not only was Oceanus powerful and could have helped Poseidon in his training, but he also had a lot of children and if the father was on the Olympians' side, then the children would also unlikely fight against them. The Titan Hecate though was a surprise. Why? Because she was not on the Olympians' side until just recently. It seems something must have happened for her to switch sides. Like, she knows something. Zeus of course didn't want to have her on their side, as he didn't trust her and he wanted her in the war tent even less. But frankly, he had no choice. Every new ally was welcome and somehow, he felt like things were changing. He felt better, mentally. He had to use his power to stop bleeding because the wound wasn't closing, but his head felt clearer. He suddenly had ideas on how to proceed and win the fight. Strange. I had an idea. We have been trying to get to Mount Othrys until now and it has been going terribly. The high ground the Titans have is costing us many casualties and we shall change that. I have come up with an idea on how to proceed from here, Zeus proudly told everyone. And pray tell, what might the ingenious idea be, Hades asked. He of course knew what it would be. And to be frank, he was revolted that they had not thought about it sooner. Like much sooner, as soon as the war started. Zeus didn't like Hades talking to him that way but said nothing for now. He would wait for now and be patient. His time would come and this idea was already the first step in securing the throne. The idea, dear brother, is to take Mount Olympus and set up our camp there. It is even higher than Mount Othrys. We will then have the high ground and turn the war around. We will use the Cyclops and Hecantachirs and have them throw giant boulders at Mount Othrys while the others rain attacks of their own, Zeus finished. He was very proud of himself. But there were so many holes in this plan that Hades wondered how this even worked in Greek mythology. True having the high ground was important but this wasn't an Anakin Obi-Wan situation. They were not very close together. And while that didn't matter much in God terms, it was still important as the Titans would be able to defend and attack them from the ground as well. They had more manpower and could afford to play this game. This plan has merit. It is very smart to take the high ground. A good idea indeed, fitting for one of your station, Métis said. Ever the supporter of Zeus. Trying to make him appear as the fitting ruler in the future. Hades couldn't stop from smiling slightly at their display. He thought it funny and even helped them a bit. And what will we do when they respond in kind and decide to attack from the ground as well? Zeus and Métis smiled unknowingly. They thought Hades had just unknowingly helped them and put himself in a worse position. How foolish! Ah, good point Hades. But that is where you and Poseidon come in. Poseidon will use the sea to pressure Mount Othrys from the south by sending storms and tsunamis their way. Then they will be attacked from the air from the north by me and the others on Mount Olympus and by Poseidon and some others from the south. Hades knew where this was going and he was amused. So he lent them a helping hand. That leaves me. What am I going to do during all this? Yes. You will have an important role. As you said the Titans could still decide to send ground troops to the north and pressure us. So you will have the important position to hold them back as much as you can, to stop them from coming north to Mount Olympus. You can use some of those tricky curses you showed us to bother the Titans, what do you say, Zeus added the last part with a smile on his face. So much honey, haha. All right, I'm game. Let us commence in your marvelous plan to finally turn this war around and grant us victory over our oppressive father and his goons. Or something like that, Hades was bored and just wanted to get this over with. He could walk up to Mount Othrys and take the Titans one by one or even together and add them to his ever-growing army. That would end this pathetic conflict and finally give Earth some rest. But no, he had to at least give Zeus a chance. And participating in a war like this had more use than one might think. Imagine Hades walking up to Mount Othrys. He calls upon his ten plus million shadow soldiers to have them fight the common soldiers that are not worth fighting himself, 
while he fights one titan after the other. His army would grow tremendously and he would also gain titans as powerful fighters, a perfect win for everyone, no? No. That would not be good. What would be the point? The war would be over but no one would be sure of what happened. There might be rumors about Hades killing everyone, but nothing to be sure about. And to top it all off he would have a very angry primordial on his ass. It wasn't that it bothered him much, he could deal with Gaia, but it would be a drag. He had no time to invest in a dumb primordial whining about her children. He had much better things to do. The underworld wasn't going to build itself, you know. The last bad thing about Hades simply soloing the war was the missing merit. He was using this time for two things. One, he wanted to increase his shadow army. That was always a good idea. There was no such thing as too many shadow soldiers. He had a place to stow them away, they didn't use much space. The perfect army. And two, he was going to increase his merit in this war. His name shall strike fear in the hearts of his enemies and those who think of double-crossing him will live in fear, not knowing whether their shadow holds a soldier of Hades. He was creating an image, of a powerful and merciless god that kills you and won't even let you rest after you die. You will serve him for eternity and there is nothing you can do anything about it. For he will have the last say. He is, the end. Hades walked out of the tent. The meeting had been adjourned. Everyone was getting ready for the plan, except Hades. He had nothing to prepare. His attire was not elegant, something he would have to change in the future, because he had been working in the mines before they came. He would have to find a seamstress in the future to make him some clothes. But for now, these clothes would have to do. When Hades walked through the camp and looked at everything, someone called his name. Lord Hades, a feminine voice said. Hades turned around and saw a woman walking towards him. She was tall and walked with slow calculated steps. She wore black and together with her black hair, you could think of her as a goth girl, but that was not the case. It made her seem, elegant. Hades could see the glint in her eyes and knew what sort of woman he was dealing with. She was going to be an enjoyable person to talk to, he hoped. Hecate POV I could feel his eyes on me. But it wasn't the kind of look filled with lust like the ones I usually got from the titans and also gods, no it was different. I felt a shiver run down my back. He wasn't just looking at me, he was judging my worth. He was looking right through me. That was usually the look I gave others and now I was on the receiving end, how intriguing. The air around this god was different, just as I foresaw. Lord Hades I wished to speak to you. Aha, uh -huh, was all the gods said. He did not seem interested in the slightest. Please allow me to introduce myself. My name is Hecate, I am the Titaness of Magic, Crossroads and Necromancy. I see. I wanted to say that I am glad you are fighting with your siblings, I always thought that they were missing something to win. And I am happy that they found it now. Good to know. I also wanted to say that you really helped Lord Zeus explain his plan back there. I am impressed at your quick thinking. Thank you. Is that all? He didn't seem to be surprised or getting the hint. Why was he acting this way? Was he not interested? I had to change my tactics. Maybe he was one of those dense ones? But she had never seen such a god. Was that the reason why he wasn't interested in women? No, that could not be it. She was sure that he was interested in women and not men. How should she go about this then? Eh, uh, I wanted to remark how similar our divinities are. Quite peculiar don't you think? Not really. No? Don't we both have a divinity of necromancy? I can feel it from you. We are quite alike, I said dropping a very obvious hint. Are you also the goddess of riddles? What? No, why do you ask that, I was confused. How did he get to such? Because you are talking in riddles and for some reason try to hide your intentions. 
you're probably one of the smartest in the room but why don't you stop with the useless waste of air and speak about what you want? I. Cliffhanger. I know you like those. Chapter 36, War 2, Patrol Unit. It seems my poor cliffhanger was not well received. Fine then, have another chapter you hyenas. Are you also the goddess of riddles? What? No, why do you ask that, I was confused. How did he get to such? Because you are talking in riddles and for some reason try to hide your intentions. You're probably one of the smartest in the room but why don't you stop with the useless waste of air and speak about what you want? I. Third person POV. I see. It seems you saw right through me, Hecata said with a sad smile. Her ploy to get Hades to do what she wanted had failed. I'm guessing you were trying to get me to offer something or give you something and then it would look good because I would be the one who had offered it to you. You are smart but I find it appalling that you try to manipulate me in the first talk we have. Quite a foolish gamble on your part. You should have thought about what it meant if it failed. After all first impressions matter. Hades then walked away. What did he care about her? She was none of his concern. When he heard that she had switched sides before he had joined them, he was suspicious. He thought that she must have seen something with her magic. She probably had minor clairvoyant abilities through her divinity of magic. So he didn't say anything. And even if she was a spy, sent by Kronos to tell him all their secret plans, he didn't care. Zeus' plan was solid and he would get to fight and increase his army, what more could he want? Although he was not overly excited of course. He had been to the solo leveling world a few weeks ago and had fought enough there. Still, it was fun to test your current limits against an enemy such as Kronos. Although limits were not really something Hades had, he still had a current level of strength and power that he liked to test against strong enemies. All those limits were removed due to his power and he was in a constant growth phase. Fighting Kronos would yield some benefits though. Hades had already approached the concept of time, so seeing how Kronos uses it will help Hades immensely. He was interested in upgrading his limitless technique anyway. But we digress. Hecate was uninteresting to Hades. He guessed that she wanted to get close to him in order to have him invite her to the underworld. But why would he do that? He was not interested in being a king. He was the god of the underworld and more, his goal was not as shallow as becoming king. If it were he would have killed Zeus yesterday and been done with it. Why bother though? Being a king meant that he had responsibilities and becoming a god-king even more so. He might rule the underworld and there might even be habitants in the underworld, but he would have others help him with most of the things. If you were a god-king, you were confronted with problems from all sides. That was not what Hades wanted. Especially not when he has something with the underworld, that will eclipse anything that Olympus could hope to be. No no no, Hades would watch Zeus run the entire thing to the ground while he kicks back and enjoys his work and travels to other worlds to collect things or enjoy himself. He already had plans for the next travel. There were a few things that he wanted to have access to, such as Haki Ornan but he thought that a butler might be the best thing before those two things. But he would get them either way. It might just take longer. But eh, uh, who cares? Everyone was ready now. It was time to go through with the plan. Poseidon was already on his way to the sea to flank the Titans on Mount Othrys. And while he had help from some children of Oceanus, he would have to carry most of the load. Hades was already walking towards Mount Othrys from the north. He would get to fight today and that was all that counts. His mind was not in the game though. He was thinking about the underworld and some of the things he would add. Something this time desperately lacks, is entertainment. That will be changed. He will create an entertainment district, or city. Why not an entertainment biome? Yes, go big or go home. Apart from entertainment, there was also the opposite, relaxation to think about. Hades had something in mind that was built by humans, in the future. The Hanging Gardens of Babylon. He was going to rebuild it and make it grander. 
and then he was going to make a big spa-themed resort out of it. Truly, sometimes his genius, it's almost frightening. Hades POV Walking through the land that would in the future be known as Greece, I could see how barren it was. The war had not helped the earth regenerate. It was like a war happened or something, sheesh. However good old granny was surely going to take care of that. Not like I cared all that much, I would be in the underworld most of the time and the rest of the time, visit different worlds. But I still enjoyed the beauty of Mother Earth. I made my way slowly and covered some ground before the first patrol spotted me. Due to me never participating in the war, I was unknown and the patrol would surely question me first to find out my motives for coming so close to Mount Othris. And that would be their downfall. The group consisted of monsters such as minotaurs, hellhounds, and even a chimera. Kronos wasn't sparing any resources. But the fact that a hellhound was present here surprised me somewhat. He should have felt the underworld being claimed and should have gone to have a look. So either he was a weak one who did not feel anything, or Kronos had a very strong grip over all these monsters. Nevertheless, I was going to reap some lives today. Would this jump start an alarm? Eh, whatever. Halt. You are stepping on territory belonging to His Majesty Lord Kronos. What is your purpose for coming here? One of the Minotaurs spoke. Look at that, a talking cow. Now I've seen everything. You. Me. Why do so many people say this? I mean it is pretty obvious that it was me, so why say it? Must be the idiots who couldn't come up with an insult. The minotaur whom I just insulted attacked me like the animal he was. Oh, you meat. Did no one tell you that the butcher was coming today? Oh well. The minotaur had a big sword in his hand, but the fact that I was insulting him seemed to short fry his brain and he just attacked me like a bull and tried to pierce me with his horns. Oh my. Such anger over a simple statement. Third person POV. Hades tried something that he always wanted to but just recently came up with. He focused slightly on his divinity of boundaries. As the Minotaur approached, Hades swung his arm from top to bottom in front of him. The bull stormed towards him and before he reached Hades, his body split in two and both sides of the Minotaur's body ran past him. And then blood gushed out and both halves fell to the ground. It was like the blood in the monster's body had forgotten what it had to do because it was also surprised. Ah, this is a cool way to flex. I should use this more. Maybe I can combine this with limitless. Food for a thought, Hades said. What he did there was simple. He concentrated the power of boundaries on his fingers and then swiped in front of him. He willed the boundary between two particular areas of space in front of him to have no boundary between them, effectively splitting that area in two. And since the poor Minotaur was inside that space, he got spliced in two as well. I really should go and visit One Piece because I am feeling like Trafalgar D. Water lore right now. Truly I just might after things are taken care of here. And I have finished my project, The Underworld. Hades was not taking this fight seriously and the other monsters did not take that lightly. Had they been smarter, they would have trusted that what they had seen wasn't something they could handle. And if they were dumber, they would have trusted their instincts more and fled. But it seemed they were at the worst spot in the intelligence department. So they attacked together. Hum. At least, you all attacked together. Otherwise, I would feel like Jackie Chan who fights against a horde of enemies, but they attack him one by one. Hades swiped the air a few more times and all the monsters split in two and died. No wonder Sukuna enjoys this so much. It is really fun to do. Hades' clothes weren't blood-stained, thanks to Infinity. He had been keeping it active to stop all that blood from falling on him. Hades looked at the bodies and then said. Rise and serve. But what Hades had not expected was, resistance. He felt resistance when he called the souls of the monsters. It seemed that Tartarus felt him taking away his children's souls and didn't like it. However, who was Hades? He was the god of boundaries, death and now also shadows, 
there was nothing that Tartarus could do here. Hades cut off the connection that Tartarus had to these monsters and then called them again. Rise and serve. The shadows began to flicker and the monsters stood in front of him as shadows. Those that could, began to kneel and greeted him as their king. Do you feel a connection to Tartarus, he asked them. Not anymore. The moment you freed us from Tartarus' control, you were able to summon us and we could come forth to serve you, the Minotaur said. I see. That's good then. I know what to do in the future. Well then let us continue with our journey to Mount Othris. Hades POV. Well wasn't that something? I remembered that all monsters spawned in Tartarus, but that he had such control and connection to them, that wasn't something I was expecting. His interest in me must have risen just now. He might help Gaia in the future to make a Giganti for me. I have no doubt that I would get on Gaia's kill list when I turned Titans into his shadows. That's why I have a plan. I have this theory that good Granny Gaia is playing favorites. Otherwise, why would she have given Kronos the scythe and not one of his elder brothers? Exactly, Kronos was her favorite and his divinity of time set him apart. This gave me a small chance to do what I wanted though. I was not truly interested in the Titans, there are other strong gods that would interest me more to have as shadow soldiers. I am interested in one of Kronos' elder brothers, Koas, or Koyas. He was the Titan of Farsight and Intelligence. He would make a great addition to the underworld as someone who manages some biomes for me. If I couldn't have him as a volunteer, I would get him as a shadow soldier, it was that easy. But now I should begin calling the herd, I can already hear the thunder striking. Zeus must have launched their first attack. Together with the Cyclops and Hecantakirs, they will cause a lot of damage. Better see that I don't fall behind. So we can see some problems that will surely arise in the future. Oh and don't worry, betrayal is a no-no for Hades. He would never allow someone to stay in the underworld if he didn't know they wouldn't betray him. The entire war is already written. And I am very proud of myself. I'm glad I got to write it. Tomorrow is the next chapter. Chapter 37, War 3, Hades vs. Atlas The war as well as half of the underworld building has been completed on my end. We are slowly nearing the world of Bleach where Hades will spend quite a while in. It is one of my personal favorites long before the anime started. The FML slash love interest is from Bleach. Now I added a poll in the auxiliary chapter. I need some darker character that is strong at the same time. It is either of those two and I believe they both deserve a bit of love. Thunder struck and multiple explosions could be heard from Mount Othris. The air was filled with attacks of all shapes and sizes. Hades could see Zeus far in the air floating and using his master bowl to fire at Mount Othris and doing major damage. As surprising as it is, the idea to take the higher ground and attack the titans from the air was surprisingly effective. How they had not come up with that sooner. Hades didn't understand. But oh well. To each their own. Now it was time for Hades to do his part. He had not gotten a symbol of power, at least not one that was crafted by the gods. But maybe, he could get his own symbol of power very soon. There was this world that came to mind again. He thought about going there already but forgot about it because he had other more pressing matters to attend to. But he will go there for sure. It was his favorite manga when he was still human. Finally, something happened. Hades could see a giant of a man running towards his position. It seemed Kronos had given the order to attack Mount Olympus from the ground and Atlas was the one to do his bidding as one of his most devoted followers. But that was good for Hades. He wanted to test out his strength against the Titan of Strength. It would be the last time until Heracles was born and then turned into a god of strength by Zeus. Atlas saw Hades but paid him no mind as he had never seen him before. However, as he ran past Hades, something peculiar happened. His vision got blurry for a moment and he found himself flung backwards. He fell to the ground and crushed many monsters and minor gods that came with him. Wa what happened, Atlas was confused. 
One moment he was running and the next he got flung backwards. Was there an ambush? A trap of sorts? No, he couldn't see anything. Did he trip? Or did Kronos call him back and therefore turn back time? Better make sure. Atlas stood back up and ran back up Mount Othris. What the bloody heck is going on? Where is that buffoon running to, Hades said after an awkward pause. His enemy first doesn't even notice him and then after he makes him shoot back, he runs away. That makes no sense. Oh well, I guess we must enjoy ourselves then don't we, Hades said addressing the monsters that were also perplexed about the situation. The minor gods looked at Hades with trepidation. None had seen him do anything but they figured it must have been him who knocked Atlas back. Well, come at me. No one moved a muscle. They were either confused or wary of Hades. But that was not cool in Hades' eyes. He was unhappy about the beginning of this fight. If you don't want to attack, I will. In the next moment, darkness spread from Hades' position in a circular manner until it covered a wide area. This action alarmed many, but before they could do anything, spears, swords and other weapons or claws came out of the darkness and killed the monsters. They fell to the ground, dead. The minor gods that had seen this were also stabbed but they didn't die from it. Rise and serve, Hades' voice sounded all around the battlefield. One after the other, the shadows of the monsters began to move and stand up. The minor gods who saw this were terrified and tried to flee. And where are you going, Hades said, Blue. Hades used cursed technique laps, Blue and pulled all of them towards him. As they flew towards him, Hades waited. In total, there were five minor gods present on the battlefield. And those five approached his position. Before they crashed into him, multiple attacks came out of the shadows of his body. His shadows used the small shadows that his clothes made and attacked the bodies from there. It was well choreographed. No communication was needed. Hmm, that is a problem I haven't yet thought about. I can't truly kill you, can I? You are immortal and are connected to your domains. This means that as long as your domain exists, you won't ever truly die. Hades was thinking out loud as the bodies of the gods were impaled or bitten or just lay on the ground around him. He was unconcerned with them listening to his rambling. He had to find a way to kill them. And if you guys don't truly die, I can't make shadows out of you. So how shall we do that? I mean it's not like the world will fall into chaos when you no longer exist. So does it truly matter? Hmm. Hades contemplated for a moment. He did go against the natural order of things. But death was natural and if they die then, it would be natural, or not. While he contemplated this, Atlas had arrived back on Mount Othris. He didn't understand what was happening. It hadn't been Kronos who pulled him back, but then who was it? Atlas made his way back down. He had a lot a lot of time going back up. Now he had to make haste. Kronos was unsure about the outcome of this battle and he had never seen his brother like that. When he descended from the mountain he didn't see any of the monsters or gods waiting for him. They must have gone ahead. Good, at least some thought ahead. This would save him a lot of time. He accelerated and put a lot of force into his legs. He shot forward, and then something happened. The same thing as before, Atlas was halted and pulled back again. His organs hit the front of his body and he felt some blood run down his mouth. You know if this happens again I might get the impression you don't even want to fight me. I am deeply hurt, you know. I had an entire speech planned that villains and heroes exchange. Thou shall not pass and then you go, you can't stop me. And then back to me it's not too late to change and then you you'll never win and then me again evil will never prevail, and then you weakness disgusts em, oh wait no that would be one of my lines. Atlas.exe has stopped working. Well, it's still a work in progress. We don't have to use these exact words, we can. Enough. Sheesh no need to shout. I'm standing right here. Who are you? Name's Hades, Lord of the Dead. 
Hi, how ya doin? Hades offered Atlas a hand. Hades, you're one of Kronos Sprats. But I haven't seen you all those years. What happened? Were you scared? Eh, not really. I mean while it is indeed scary to fight in a war. I am usually the scary one, Hades had taken to a lower more threatening tone. No more games. This was going to be a fight to the no longer able to fight. Ha 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 ha, you are funny. So you hide for over a decade and then decide to face me as your first opponent. You truly are a strange one. But oh well, if I bring Lord Kronos your head, he'll be more than pleased. Oh? You are very confident in yourself. That is good, I hope you stay that confident. Hades was no longer in any mood to joke. He had taken to his usual stoic face. Atlas was a good opportunity to test himself. He hadn't fought a good battle since he challenged his brother Satoru. And now, he was much stronger than back then. Hades POV. Atlas attacked. It was nothing special, the attack had a good technique and it became apparent to me that Atlas had fought a lot of battles before, but there were no martial arts used. Atlas had a wide grin on his face. It seems he was happy about killing me and bringing my head to Kronos. He will be disappointed though as this, is not even slightly close to making my try. The Titan bent his knee, pulled his right arm back and punched with great force. Once again a fist was nearing my face in the span of two days. How do these people think that he is an easy opponent? Is there something on my forehead that said so? I bent my head to the side and the arm shot right past me. The momentum was too much though and Atlas lost his balance. I of course used this chance and brought my knee up and hit him in the chin. While normally the fight would be over now, this was not the titan of strength for nothing. Even though his brain was rattled, he managed to stop himself from falling unconscious. Atlas narrowed his eyes and looked at me. It seems that surprised him. And I must say I am also surprised at his tenacity. Now the fight can start for real. Atlas once again attacked. This time he was prepared for counterattacks. I dodge his fist once again and attack with my own fist to his solar plexus. He blocks my punch and tries to grab me with the other hand. I duck and bend my knees to build momentum. I put some strength into my legs and try to uppercut the titan. He narrowly dodges backwards, sets his left foot back and raises his right one. He does a frontal kick with the right foot and stops my advance. He has very good battle instincts. I don't think his brain can keep up with all of this. He does it all on instinct. But it matters little. No matter how much of an experienced brawler you are, you will never win against someone who has mastered many martial arts. The fight continues. Atlas trying to gain enough space to use his monstrous strength and punch me, while I keep us close to each other to have him lose his rhythm and keep him from really delivering punches that contain his full power. He punches out with his left and I dodge to my left. I punch out with my own left, targeting his center. Atlas has no time to dodge and just takes it while trying to get me with his cross. My left fist digs into his stomach. I pull back very fast and deflect his cross with my retreating arm. This opens him up for another attack which I promptly deliver. My right fist approaches his face and makes contact. This marks the fight's first hits. Atlas collects himself again and once again tries to hit me. He is a simple fighter and does not even use his legs very often. He likes to get close and personal. I have no problem with that and deflect or dodge all his attacks. I wait for the right chance and punch or kick him. He punches with the left, I duck under it come around the right and use a right hook to hit him in the face. Atlas shakes it off, swiftly, and tries to elbow me. I retreat a step back and wait for his assault. Just as predicted, he uses his top speed and punches out as fast as he can, hoping to get a shot in. That however is a pipe dream. I am just as fast and simply deflect all attacks. Third person POV the fight gets more and more hectic as Atlas loses more and more ground. He turns into a beast that no longer cares for defense and only tries to hit Hades. 
Atlas punches with his left, and Hades blocks and punches him in the face. Atlas punches with his right, Hades deflects and punches him in the face. Atlas tried to tackle Hades. Hades put his palm forward with it facing the left. He has it in the perfect one-inch punch position and then uses it. PFFFFFF. The air leaves Atlas and effectively stops his advancement. Hades grabs Atlas' head and brings it down to meet his knee. Their meeting doesn't go well and Atlas' head cracks. His head shoots back making him look to the sky and then Atlas falls to the ground. Hades stands there and looks at the beaten form of Atlas. That was a good workout. Well, I think we're done he. A flash. Hades' eyes widen in surprise and then. Asterisk Booam. Asterisk. Chapter 38, War 4, 2v1. Bang. There was a loud and big explosion. Dust covered it all up. Atlas looked at the scene with wide eyes. He hadn't seen what happened but something massive just hit his opponent. It took him off guard and he paid the price for his arrogance. You don't let your guard down. Embarrassing Atlas. Truly. For you to be in such a state and that by an unknown god as well. You have lost your touch, a voice said. Atlas looked to his left and saw a tall and muscular man, with long, flowing orange hair and a regal, confident demeanor. The man was floating down from the sky and landed next to Atlas. He looked down on Atlas and had an arrogant smile on his face. If I tell Kronos what happened today, you won't live to see another day. Your reputation would plummet and you would lose your position as the general of the army. Hyperion, Atlas said. What are you doing here? I didn't need your help. Oh, but I think you did. Look at you, all beaten up and lying on the ground. You're lucky I killed him. He was actually strong Hyperion. It seemed like he knew what I would do and how to respond. I never got to use my full strength as he kept close to me. It was so frustrating, even you with your speed would have had difficulties. Ha ha ha. How sentimental, a voice said. Both titans widened their eyes and looked to where the voice came from. The dust had still not settled yet, to neither of the two had noticed the man standing there. Wah! Impossible, said Hyperion. He could make out who it was after the dust had settled somewhat. He still had his arms folded in front of him but he was surprised at what he saw. This god managed to survive one of his strongest blasts. Impossible? That word is the most commonly used wrong word ever. You probably mean, improbable, the voice said. The silhouette became more visible and when the dust had finally cleared the two titans could see Hades standing there without so much as a scratch. The only different thing was his eye patch lay on the ground broken. Truly a shame. You had your chance and wasted it. That would have done some damage had it hit, probably. But this is my only shirt. How are you still alive? I felt none of your energy before, Hyperion was serious. Then do you feel my energy now, Hades asked. Hyperion narrowed his eyes and then opened them wide in realization. He could not sense it. How had he not noticed this before? How are you doing that? I have my energy under control. That goes for all my powers. You on the other hand, truly a shame to have such wasteful energy control. You should train that. So what do you say lads, shall we scrimmage? Listen to Spider Bait, Black Betty while reading. It makes my bad writing better. Hyperion didn't need to be said twice. He shot with the speed of light and punched. His fist didn't manage to make contact with Hades' face though. In his confusion, Hyperion stopped for a second and Hades used that to deliver an attack to his face. Hyperion woke up but it was too late, he was hit in the face and slid back a bit. He had managed to block using his insane speed. There was no break, tough. Hades rushed at him and did a roundhouse kick aiming for the titan's head. The leg was easily blocked though. Hyperion grabbed his leg and pulled a bit while lifting his leg and kicking. The kick was once again blocked by this invisible barrier. 
Hades used the fact that his leg was in Hyperion's hand and tried to get closer and kick once more. At that moment a fist impacted his face and he shot to the left. Hyperion simply looked at the downed god with disinterest. Took you long enough. Did you have enough dirt to eat? Shut up. They attacked together. Hyperion from the right and Atlas from the left. Hades saw them coming. He pushed off the ground with his hands while swinging his legs over his head in a backward motion, similar to the start of a back handspring. As he swung his legs over, he used the momentum and strength in his arms to push himself up and shoot towards the two incoming titans. Hades used their momentum against them and had them shoot into his attack. The two titans' faces were bent inwards and Hades got the higher position above them. He pulled his fist back and punched Atlas in midair. He had to block the leg that came towards him from the left. It seems Hyperion had already recovered and used his focus on Atlas to attack. However, Hades caught the leg. Before he could do anything with it though, his right arm was grabbed by Atlas. Atlas pulled Hades towards him. Hades refused to let go of Hyperion's leg though and slammed him to the ground, taking a punch himself. Hades held his chin. That punch had quite the force behind it. Hades smiled. Not his normal smile but the same smile Satoru had when he got enlightened. He was pumped up and maybe also a bit psychotic. Hades spread his arms wide and laughed. Ha 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 ha, come. Let us continue this marvelous dance to the death. None of the titans waited for him to finish talking fully. He was crazy in their eyes. He was holding his own but there was no way he would win this fight. They shot towards him. Hyperion was faster, obviously, and was in front of Hades in a millisecond. Once again, just like at the very beginning of the fight, Hyperion was about to hit Hades at light speed. This time though he was not met with infinity. Red. Hyperion's vision turned red and he was met with the strongest hit he had ever received in his life. There was that one time when Atlas hit him with full power, but it was even stronger than that. Hyperion was not only met with reversal, red, but he was also traveling at near light speed. This multiplied the force by uncalculable margins. The force was so strong in fact, that Hyperion lost consciousness. His battered and bloodied form shot back into the mountain. Atlas watched this scene unfold with shock. He had not expected Hades to be capable of such power. He vaguely remembers Hades telling him, that he was the god of the dead, but he had forgotten about it. He was a little shy on brains after all. Atlas looked back at Hades who was still standing there with a big smile on his face. He seemed to be in a euphoria. And Hades truly was. The fact that he was experiencing something like this fight was heaven for him. The Gojo blood had influenced him more than he thought. And since his powers were not stopping it from influencing him, he didn't think it was harmful. On the contrary, he loved it. Atlas used the time when Hades was in this state and attacked again. He was more careful though. He had to look out for this attack, red or something. Atlas lunged forward, his massive fist aimed at Hades' head. Hades ducked, narrowly avoiding the blow, and retaliated with a swift kick to Atlas' midsection. Atlas staggered backwards, cursing. He attacked again. Atlas, despite not being the deity of light was fast, and he attempted a series of quick jabs and hooks, aiming to wear Hades down. Hades, however, was not impressed. He dodged and weaved, using his agility to avoid Atlas' attacks. He saw an opening and delivered a powerful roundhouse kick to Atlas' face, sending him sprawling to the ground. Now seething with rage, Atlas charged again. Seeing no point in this useless exchange, Hades planned to finish this blue. Hades swiped his hand from the front to the back. Atlas' body flew towards him. And then. Red. Pointing two fingers at Atlas' approaching figure, a red sphere was formed. And the same oppressive force hit ATL. Bang. Just as Atlas was about to get hit, yellow beams of light hit Hades and pierced him, sending him flying backwards. Infinity was not active right then because he was building reversal, red. 
Hades was not actively making himself weaker, but he just enjoyed the fight too much and dragged it out. And now he was punished for it. His body flung back. There was no blood flowing out of his wounds as the intense heat from the beams of light cauterized the wounds. Hades stood back up and looked at the figure of Hyperion that was breathing heavily. It seems he had hit him good back then and he was quite in a bad state. Haya, Haya, Haya. Are you all right brother? asked Atlas. I'm all right. Let us kill this little shit now. Atlas, the titan of strength, cracked his knuckles, his immense form radiating power. Hyperion, resplendent in divine radiance, despite his injured state, stood at his side, ready to combat Hades, cosmic forces. They thought that he must command space in some way and that was, not wrong. Hades extended his hand, conjuring an immense version of blue, that threatened to swallow the titans whole. Atlas, whose fighting spirit had awakened anew, lunged forward with a powerful fist, aiming to shatter the spatial sphere. The world seemed to tremble as the two forces clashed. Atlas didn't want to give Hades enough time to fully unleash Blue, so he attacked it with his most powerful punch, giving up on defense and only trying to give Hyperion a window of attack. Contrary to what one might think, Hyperions actually cared for Atlas and did something surprising. He sent a beam of light towards Atlas. This beam was a special one and it gently lay itself around Atlas, forming a protective barrier. Atlas, empowered by Hyperion's light, charged forward, his fists began to generate shockwaves that resonated through the battlefield. He delivered a mighty blow that, as it met Blue, sent ripples across the surroundings, forcing Hades to retreat. The Titan of Strength pressed his advantage summoning the strength of countless moons to amplify his attacks and finally get this over with. Hyperion, seized this opportunity and unleashed beams of light and other radiant energy, casting brilliant and blinding strikes toward Hades. In that moment, time slowed down. Hades was using the six eyes to their full potential right now. He extended his hand and focused on the limitless technique. And right now he was focusing on laps, blue. He imagined the technique in his head and remembered the feeling he felt when he created his special infinity, Void. He was attempting something similar but different at the same time. He didn't want to make it bigger, on the contrary. He wanted to make it smaller. He pumped more cursed energy into his attack and then willed it to compress. He used his divinity of boundaries to remove the boundary he wished to cross right now. And then it happened. The blue sphere turned darker, until it was fully black. He had created, a black hole. Hades looked at the two titans again. He had done it. He had managed to use them as a whetstone to come up with something new and exciting. He was trying to push himself and that was a full success. Amplified technique lapse compression, black hole. He sent the black hole towards them and watched it swallow everything. The attack from Hyperion was instantly swallowed, and the shockwaves generated from Atlas punches were also sucked in. And then more got sucked in. The ground, trees, air, sunlight, and even the two titans. Nu, they both shouted and tried to get away, but there was no getting out of this one. They were sucked into the hole and disappeared. Hades began to slowly power the technique down, however, it was not over yet. Crack. Cracks were heard and just when Hades stopped the technique, space seemingly broke like glass and out of that hole in space, the titans shot with outstretched arms. Both of their fists reached Hades and cracked his skull, sending him flying backwards. H-A-A-A-A-A, H-A-A-A-A. Hyperion and Atlas were in abysmal states right now. Hyperion in the desperate attempt to stop both of them from dying at the bottom of the black hole, had used his life force to go supernova, so to speak. He had literally exploded and pushed Atlas out. Had Hades not stopped the technique so soon and had the technique not been the first time he used it, it would not have worked and both of them would have died. But now Atlas at least survived and managed to punch Hades with his and Hyperion's combined 110% of power. Atlas looked at the charred form of Hyperion. Hyperion, hey -ah. Ha 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 ha. 
That was amazing. Atlas turned around again as slowly as he could with his injuries. He saw Hades without a shirt, golden ichor all over his body walking towards them. He cracked his head and was looking unperturbed. What was he? How are you still going with all those injuries, Atlas asked bewildered. This had never happened. They had never been beaten to this extent and what's more by this young god. The labor we delight in physics pain. Truer words will never be spoken, Hades answered the titan who looked pretty beat up right now. What? asked Atlas. He was a little shy on brains after all. Oh my! You haven't heard that line before? You really ought to read more. Now then, Hades said. He pointed at Hyperion's chard, stump. His arms, legs and part of his thorax were missing. Disgusting. Red. Boom. Hyperion's body exploded and turned to dust. Who knows when he might reform and if he will at all, after all Hades had plans. Hyperion. N-O-O-O-U. There it is again. That typical you. Why do people say that? Oh well. This has gone for long enough. Hollow technique, purple. Underscore. Well, that's it. I used a lot of time to write this chapter and I am happy with the way it went. This is probably my favorite chapter so far. If you don't like it and want to tell me, please sugarcoat it for me. I am far too happy it went this well. But I'm a novice and understand if some things are bad. Chapter 39, War V, The Climax Third Person POV The war was nearing its climax. Let us divide the battlefield and go over all parts of it. The three main battlefields are the air above Mount Othrys, where Zeus is raining lightning down on the palace and the Titans living there. He is supported by the Cyclops and Hecantachirs who are sending giant boulders at Mount Othrys. The second battlefield is the land between Mount Olympus and Mount Othrys. That is where our boy Hades has been fighting. There is not much field left of that battle, though. The third battlefield is located to the south of Mount Othrys, particularly the sea. That is where Poseidon has been sending hurricanes, storms and earthquakes to keep the Titans' attention divided. Poseidon has had to stop though as he had been attacked by Oceanus some time before Hades had finished his battle. And they were still duking it out. The rest of the Olympians and their allies fought all over the land. Hecate was using spells to stop Iapetus from doing too much damage and killing their members. His divinity of mortality was dangerous in such a fight. He had already cost them most of their troops by making them mortal for a time and then killing them. Then they had to reform and that could take years. Hera was fighting Crius and Demeter was fighting Coeus. Prometheus and Thetis were doing their best to reduce the amount of monsters there were. And they were probably one of the more successful groups. Hera was doing well against Crius but it would take a long time for her to win, if she would win at all. Demeter was doing good too, but Coeus was not the titan of foresight and intelligence for nothing. He saw her flaws and exploited them brutally. She needed help from Prometheus more than once to get her out of trouble. After initializing the fight, Zeus focused on doing the most damage possible using his divinity of lightning and creating devastating thunderstorms. Together with his symbol of power the Master Bolt, he did a lot of damage and got the attention of the King of Titans, Kronos himself. And that is what the supposed leader of the Olympians has been doing since shortly after the fight began. Among all the chaos that was going on, Hades had been the most successful as he had taken out two titans single-handedly. Hades looked at the two parts of the titan lying on the ground in front of him. The golden ichor soaking the ground. Atlas was split into two parts with a circular giant hole missing from his body. Truly you have a remarkable ability to regenerate. But you won't get up any time soon, I reckon. Better see what else I can gain from this. Hmm. Now that I think about it, why not see how Hyperion is doing, Hades said to no one in particular. He could feel Hyperion had seemingly entered his domain of light and his soul was not available to take for Hades. Well, that is not quite accurate. He could take it forcefully, 
but that might damage the fabric of the world. The light was important after all. And what's more, he wanted to have something that angered the future god of light slash sun Apollo. Hades decided to leave things for now and focus on looking for another battle. It was very rewarding and fun to grow mid-fight. He had gone through a breakthrough and his understanding of infinity as well as math and gravity had increased greatly. He guessed it wouldn't be long until he gained a minor divinity in those aspects. But he was not in a hurry. He had taken it slowly during the fight and mostly responded to the other's attacks while trying to feel pressured. He did get what he wanted, but he always knew that he was in no danger whatsoever. Making his way towards Mount Othrys, Hades could feel the fight taking place on the top. His father must be fighting Zeusy and from the feel of things, Father Dearest was not doing as well as expected. Kronos should be wiping the floor with Zeus but, he wasn't. What was going on here? Ah, uh, I see. So that's how it is. Interesting. Hades could feel what was happening. His six eyes were still active after all. He could feel all sorts of energies and at that moment he could feel a very special energy around Zeus covering and infusing him with power. Fate. That was fate energy. They were weaving their little stories about how they liked and used this to give the youngest Olympian a boost in power. How foolish they were. There was no way Zeus won this fight without his brothers. But perhaps that was the idea. To give Zeus enough power until they arrived. That only meant one thing for Hades. He would wait and see how long this boost lasted. What? There was no way he would give those three anything they wanted. The fight dragged on. Zeus was holding his own and he was growing while he fought. Impressive stuff but it wasn't enough to bridge the gap that thousands of years of experience did for Kronos. Hades could see the different ways his father used the concept of time to help him in the fight. The surprising thing was to see how, crudely Kronos used his divinity. It seemed like he was either rusty or just bad at using it. But that seemed impossible. How could a being of his standing and age be this unimaginative? Using his six eyes, Hades could understand and would in the future replicate the techniques Kronos used. Time was closely connected with space and he had some years of experience with the concept of space. However, it has to be said that using the limitless technique, does not equal understanding the concept of space itself. It does help tremendously though, and with a bit of effort, he will master it soon. An important thing to note though, is that Hades is not actually interested in mastering as many divinities as possible. He is perfectly fine with having the ones he has now. His divinity of boundaries is something that will take him beyond what is believed to be possible and his second wish will stop anyone from interfering with Hades' wish to achieve those heights. So it mattered little to Hades whether he understood space or not. He lived to enjoy himself or at least he tried to. And that was also seen in his fight with the two titans. Had Hades wanted to, he could have removed the barriers that held the body together. He could have removed the van der Waals or electromagnetic forces and watched them dissolve into nothingness. But he didn't do that. He enjoyed the fight for what it was, a chance to improve himself and have fun. That is what Hades wanted and that is what he enjoyed. He always thought that the cultivators from those stories must live the most boring lives because they just cultivate. Meaning they sit there and try and absorb energies from the world to progress and get stronger. And that just wasn't for Hades. Sure the occasional young master would be fun to mess around with but the long time it took to progress and the necessary sitting and whatnot, just wasn't for him. And yet he never wanted to have to worry about being too weak for something. He wished to be free and travel. Absolute freedom was something that Hades thought about wishing for. But he decided to go with boundary manipulation instead as that included absolute freedom as well. So now, standing here and seeing Kronos' use of such vestigial moves and techniques disappointed Hades. The outcome he was expecting started to show. Zeus was no longer able to keep up with everything that Kronos dished out. The fate energy had depleted substantially. Soon Zeus would be defeated and Hades would have the stage. Or so he thought. Just before Kronos dealt the finishing blow, someone sprang into the fight and intercepted Kronos. 
Poseidon, Hades was surprised. Not that he sprung into action without thinking and neither was he surprised because he hadn't seen him coming. No, he was surprised that his fight with Oceanus was finished. Hades guessed that something must have happened for Oceanus to either leave or let Poseidon go. There was no way that Oceanus had lost though, unless, of course. The fate energy. It could have played a role in his fight too. But then, it didn't play a role in Hades' fight. So maybe Zeus was the chosen baby by fate? Hades was correct in his assumption. Shortly after Hades had won the fight against Hyperion and Atlas, one of the Pleiades, who had been watching the fight, had rushed to Oceanus in tears and told him all about the battle and the sad fate of her father Atlas and Hyperion. Oceanus had stopped fighting Poseidon then and decided that it would be smart to go back to being neutral. He was a family man at heart, but his brother Kronos was not someone who was very likable, especially in recent years. So in the end Oceanus conceded the fight and let Poseidon go. Poseidon having heard what the daughter of Atlas said, decided to rush to Mount Othrys, correctly assuming the final fight against Kronos to take place there. Sigh. Hades sighed. In the end, he didn't get to see Zeus getting crushed by Kronos. But it was still worth it to watch. Now though it was finally time to end this war and get back to building the underworld. Kronos was parrying the trident of his second youngest son with the scythe that he had gotten from Gaia. He punched Zeus in the face and was about to cut Poseidon when the blade, just stopped. He looked to see a hand touching his scythe. What? Kronos said in confusion and surprise. That was, impossible. Or at least it was thought to be impossible. Anything the scythe cut, had its soul cut as well, making it one of the few weapons that could kill gods, for good. But who are we talking about here? It was Hades, the one who broke boundaries and commanded them. He said what was and wasn't possible, he was the one to decide when things ended, for he had the final say. Surprised father? This is the second time we have met and I would like to formally introduce myself. I. Hades. So you've come. And what an entrance you've made. I heard about the reason why you never entered the battlefield. How your siblings framed you and shunned you. Why do you fight for them? Why not fight for me? Fight with me? I could use your help and I know that you are not fond of them. I am surprised. I thought you were a baffon that used his strength and power as well as his dick to decide everything. And now I must find out that you are actually really cunning. I understand now why you were the king of the titans. You have my respect for finding out the only thing that you could have said, that might have made me change my mind about the war. However. I have decided. I am here for one thing only, and that is your scythe. After that you can duke it out on your own, I don't care. The scythe? You won't get the scythe boy. This weapon holds far too much power to hand it to you. It is mine and that will stay this way. Very well then. I can accept that and that is why I am fighting you. So let us use our most powerful, or at least in your case, the most powerful move and be done with this. If that is your wish then so be it child. Prepare yourself. Chapter 40, War 6, End of the War Very well then. I can accept that and that is why I am fighting you. So let us use our most powerful, or at least in your case, the most powerful move and be done with this. If that is your wish then so be it child. Prepare yourself. Kronos jumped back, creating distance. Leaving Hades standing there by himself. Poseidon was tossed away by Hades and Zeus had stayed before. He wanted to see whether Hades would die here and make it easy for him to take the throne. Kronos, a towering figure draped in green-colored robes, held in his hand the scythe, a weapon that could cleave through the fabric of time itself as well as kill a god permanently. Hades, only had pants on, leaving his chest and arms bare. The two looked at each other momentarily and then sprung into action. With a slow and deliberate movement, Kronos swung his scythe, releasing ripples of temporal distortion that bent and twisted the very reality around him. 
a maelstrom of centuries and seconds surged toward Hades, threatening to slice his existence in two. Hades could feel the scythe slicing time itself apart. At that moment it was a weapon outside of time, meaning it skipped the time it took to reach Hades. Hades focused his power on boundaries. He once again lifted his arm and swung it down leaving a white translucent-like trace. Both attacks met and erupted in a blinding burst of power. The concepts of time and boundaries met and for a timeless moment, reality itself hung in the balance. The reality around the two shifted and changed. Chronicles of forgotten civilizations rushed around them, while the boundaries of existence contorted and expanded and contracted again. As the clash reached its zenith, the very laws of existence trembled. And when it seemed to be the end of this reality, it all changed again. Reality corrected itself and silence returned to the lands. We could see Hades' arm had descended fully and was pointing to the ground now. Kronos on the other hand still had his narrowed eyes for a moment, only to then widen them. The world seemed to be split and both parts of his body fell to the ground. Hey, that was something. Glad we could do that. Now let me just grab this, Hades said and grabbed the broken scythe from the ground. He had plans with that and as it so happens, he has a similar weapon inside his inventory curse he wears as a belt. Hades was going to combine those two weapons and make them one. He liked the soul-splitting katana and wanted to use it. Hades turned around and saw the destruction he had caused when he fought against Kronos. It was like a ravine had been created from his attack. When their attacks clashed, Hades could feel the scythe approaching with his boundary sense. But he wasn't able to see it. Kronos had effectively sliced time and then clashed against Hades with all the time he had cut with the scythe. That almost created a rift in the space-time continuum but thankfully Hades was able to cut all boundaries that stood before him and cut the attack. They could have been sent to some random timeline had Hades not overpowered Kronos when he did. That was a surprisingly close call, for everyone else. And Hades was glad that he got to experience it. Well then lads, I guess we're done here, Hades said and was about to make his exit. He didn't get the chance to though as someone arrived at the battlefield. The air changed and one could smell that she had arrived. It smelled of the forest and different types of flowers. Hades turned and saw Gaia standing over Kronos' body. After looking at it for a moment she turned to look at Hades. The look on her face was hard to read, but Hades could see relief as well as some anger. You killed him. I did. Not permanently. No. Thank you. You are welcome. After that, she left. Dissolving into leaves like a Kanaha ninja. Truly she was also quite good with her exits. Zeus walked forward and looked at Kronos' body as well. It seemed I stole his, thunder, lol. But he seemed disheartened. I was not supposed to kill Kronos by myself. In fact, Kronos was not supposed to die today at all. He was supposed to be imprisoned in Tartarus after being cut into thousands of pieces. It is over. We won, Zeus said. What are we going to do with him, Poseidon asked. It seemed like he had already accepted the position of Zeus as the leader of their group. Poseidon looked at Hades. What? Hades asked. What do you think we should do? Oh, it seems like he was looking at Hades as the leader and not Zeus. That, changes nothing. He had no interest in Olympus. He was going to rule the underworld and in comparison to that. Olympus would look like a children's playground. I don't know. Give him a push, he might fall into the ravine there. Bury him for all I care. No. We must make sure he never returns. We shall cut him into thousands of pieces and then seal them in the Tartarus. We must protect our future and that is the safest way. While we're at it, we should imprison all the Titans in the Tartarus. Then they wouldn't dare rise against our rule again. Pretty bold of you to imprison all the Titans. Well, you do you. It's none of my business, Hades could see the future problems coming already. He couldn't care less though. F asterisk CK the future problems. 
he was living in the now and now, he had something better to do than to argue with Zeus. The war had ended. As soon as it was known that Kronos had been defeated, all the other titans surrendered and waited for their punishment. It was ironic really. Zeus was not a lenient ruler and they were about to vote for the future ruler of Olympus. Everyone was present, everyone? No not everyone. Someone was missing from this grand occasion and didn't think it was necessary. You can guess who. Olympus was not yet what it would be in the future, but there were already constructions going on. Titans were present and other allies were as well. Everyone was waiting to hear what would happen to them or their family members or themselves. Poseidon waved his hands to silence the hall. We are here today, to decide the fate of the world as we know it. The war against the Titans has been won and we must decide what to do about our prisoners. And most importantly we will decide how the world will be divided among us. Zeus looked at everyone in the room and waited. He had talked with Métis in the last few days and was sure that he would have to use this chance to get voted as the ruler of Olympus. Hades' absence had an unnerving as well as calming effect on him. He hoped that his brother wouldn't come today. He had twisted the truth of the battle with Kronos a little. So if Hades attended this meeting today and revealed the truth, it would be difficult to convince everyone to vote for him as ruler. What did Zeus do? Nothing much. He only claimed to have weakened Kronos for hours until Hades came and finally dealt the finishing blow. He made Hades appear as someone who waited in the background and then stole the kill from him. I call for a vote. All those in favor of having me as ruler of Olympus, put your hands up. Quite a few hands rose. Hera, Poseidon as well as their mother Rhea and surprisingly. Hestia voted for Zeus to be king. However other than that, there were only a handful of titans such as Thetis. Hecate, Prometheus and others didn't vote and looked at Zeus questioningly. Lord Zeus if I may ask a question, Hecate said. You may. Zeus said. He did not like where this was going. He had a bad premonition that this was about Hades and he could not use this right now. If we are voting on a ruler, then who else is available to be voted on? Shouldn't there be more than one candidate if we vote? Is Lord Hades also a candidate? And there it was. And she was even more blunt than he heard she was. That wasn't good. He had to turn this around. I don't know where my brother is. Am I my brother's keeper? As for the candidates, you may vote for anyone that you wish. If you wish to vote for Hades then you are free to do so. However, he is not here now. He knew today would be a vote to decide who would rule Olympus, yet he has not shown. If that doesn't tell you enough about his character, then I don't know what will. Zeus was going off rails here. He tried to make Hades appear as someone who wasn't interested in the throne, although he was sure that he was. Zeus and Métis were always aware that Hades were the biggest obstacle in his ascent to the throne. But now he will take it from him and then he will make the rules. Hades will have to obey him as his king and he will use that. I call for a vote now. If you don't wish to vote for me, then don't vote, Zeus finished. The vote was once again counted and it turned out that almost all of those present voted for Zeus as ruler. There were only two who didn't want to have Zeus as their ruler. Those two were Hecate and Nemesis. Hecate was a smart woman and she was powerful. She understood that there was more to the story than Zeus told everyone. After all, Hades had defeated and even killed one of the two titans he faced. Nemesis on the other hand knew that Zeus was lying. She saw through his lies and was unhappy with it. She also felt more in tune with what Hades represented. She along with Hecate would visit Hades soon to ask for asylum in the underworld. Good. From this moment on, Zeus is the ruler and king of Olympus. All hail King Zeus. 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 Now as the first act of my rule as king, I decree that the titans will be imprisoned in Tartarus. There they will serve a sentence for life to pay for their sins of going against us. Let this be a warning to all that want to go against us in the future. Ha 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 ha, 
Atlas was laughing in the back where the Titans were held prisoners. What's so funny Atlas, asked Zeus. You truly think you can just imprison the Titans in Tartarus? The sky would fall to the ground if you imprison them. You are not very smart are you? Oh, but I have a solution to this problem, my dear Atlas. Aha! Uh -huh. And what would that be oh great Zeus? You, will hold the sky up yourself. That is your punishment. What? No. Yes and now get him out of my sight. In the underworld with Hades and Nyx and Erebus. Say Hades, isn't today the vote to decide the king of Olympus, asked Erebus. Now that you mention it, yes I believe so. Why? Well, are you not going? Don't you want to rule? Nah. I will build something much better. Let the useless sit on their gold and marble while I enjoy all my real will have to offer in the future. Erebus had stars in his eyes. So cool. Chapter 41, Aftermath Hades POV One week has passed since they voted on the ruler of Olympus. I wasn't there and I am not sad about it. I was sure that Zeus would be voted to be ruler, as I had no interest in it. Why would I give up something that is far better for that? The underworld was coming along nicely. I had begun my work on the highway and have been placing some of the stations necessary to hold the ender portals. This will be something bigger than I imagined. At first, I thought I was just going to build some ender portals connect them with nice roads and then be done with it. But it had undergone changes inside my head. The highway was now a sub-dimension, or it will be in the future. Yes, that's how massive the proportions are to create the highway. But there is more to it than just transportation. We shall talk about that when I have finished the underworld. Nix and Erebus are spending a lot of time watching me build. I don't know why they do that, but I can imagine they are a bit bored after living inside the Night Palace for millennials. They invited me to dinner once and I must say, it is a grand palace. Fitting for two primordials. But not for me. I preferred my buildings to have rooms with normal heights. The rooms in the Night Palace were so tall that you probably could turn into your true form and still have space to play volleyball. The food was good though. I enjoyed our time and even met their children Hypnos and Thanatos. Thanatos was instantly interested in me and wanted to get to know me and all the plans I had for the underworld. He wished to be a part of it and I said that I had nothing against that. Karen's position in the underworld has already been established. Hades planned to change his usual path across the river Styx. He will have to row the boat across a special river, that Hades will produce in the future. A meeting with Styx herself will also be happening soon. Shortly after Zeus had been voted as ruler of Olympus and decided on the Titan's punishment, Hades got another visit from Gaia. She was not happy. Flashback. Hades was working on the underworld when he felt a heavy knock on the underworld. He was startled and focused to see who that was. When he saw his grandmother Gaia standing there, he thought about simply not letting her in. He knew why she was here. She was probably unhappy about the fate of her children. Well, what did he care? He was not there to watch over his siblings. He didn't even care about them. He planned to not hear about them for the next few years as he enjoys building his home. In the end, he opened the underworld to let Gaia in. She came storming in and appeared in front of him. For a moment she looked him over and then at the two other primordials who were enjoying tea and cookies on the side. Grandmother. Nice to see you again. Is something the matter, Hades broke the ice. Gaia was a weird character. It felt like she never had any true relationship. Her social skills were abysmal and he was the one who had to face the music and take care of the awkwardness. I heard that Zeus had been voted ruler of Olympus. Yes, I heard that as well. I hope you are making fun because you cannot be serious. No, I am not joking in the slightest. Why would I be joking in the matter? Gaia looked at Hades with narrowed eyes. She must truly think he was joking about that. But why? You are not joking. No. Then how did it come to that? 
why would you allow Zeus to become the ruler of Olympus? You are far stronger than he is. You should have been able to become king. Aha, so that's what you mean. I never showed up to that meeting. I have no interest in ruling Olympus. Putting up with the rest of Kronos' offspring was hard enough as it is, and I don't wish to prolong it any further. Besides, I am the god of the underworld. Why would I settle for something lesser than I will build myself? Gaia's expression didn't lighten up in the slightest. She still looked at Hades with narrowed eyes. Ha! Huh. I don't believe that is the true reason for your visit is it grandmother, Hades didn't want to talk about it. However, he understood that she would probably not leave before they did. No. I came here because I wanted to know why my children were imprisoned. In Tartarus no less. I demand to know how you could have let this happen. Why would you do something like that to them? Once again they found themselves in the position where Mother Earth was shouting and blaming Hades for something that he hadn't committed. And he had warned her what would happen if she did that again. Hades' expression hardened. It seemed like Gaia would not learn. You did that once already. Coming into my realm and starting to blame me for something I had not done. I told you what would happen should this happen again. Oh? A little godling thinks he can. You are not in your realm. This is the underworld. And as such you have no say in here. So shut your bloody mouth before I bash it in. All those present were surprised and didn't speak. Gaia was the most surprised. She had judged Hades as someone who did not get angry and shout. And yet here he was. The audacity. I warned you. I warned you that you won't like what happens should you do that again. And now you have. I declare this, I, Hades Gojo, the honored one, ruler of the underworld, god of death, wealth, the underworld, and boundaries declare you Gaia as unwelcome in this realm. You are hereby banished and not allowed to enter for the next millennia. Now leave. The world around them bent to Hades' will. His declaration was heard all around the underworld and the world trembled. Gaia was forcefully expelled from the underworld as its ruler had declared it. Before she left though, Hades left her with some parting words. Next time, go and ask Zeus about his decisions. He is the black sheep in my opinion. And with that, she was gone. For the next 1000 years, she would not be allowed to enter the underworld. He hoped that gave him some time to relax and not bother with the rest of Kronos' offspring. Hades turned around and looked at the two primordials. Erebus had his mouth hanging open and even Nyx had a surprised expression. That was, awesome, Erebus said. And this time, Nyx did not bash his head or reprimand him. She was still surprised and was looking at Hades. It was necessary. I warned her. I decided not to punch her in the face. This seemed like the best option. You don't understand. You have just forcefully banished a primordial from your dimension. That is most impressive. However Gaia will not forget that, Nyx explained. Good then. That is what I wanted. I am not interested in having her here and then screaming her lungs out at me because of something Zeus did. And I predict this will happen often in the future. My youngest brother is not the smartest tool in the shed. But we shall see. Flashback end. Right now, Hades was on his way to see Styx. She was an important river that flowed through the underworld and he wanted to speak with her. While he allowed her to exist and stay in the underworld and wished to have a good relationship, he would not take any crap from her. She would do what he wanted and that is that. He could always create another river. True, Styx acted as a boundary between the world of the living and the dead. But Hades could create another boundary as easily as snapping his fingers. Hades arrived at the place where he felt Styx's consciousness to be right now. He waited for her to materialize and show herself. If she would do that, this would be a good sign. As he hoped, the water stirred and from it, a woman materialized. She was an elegant woman with long dark hair that seemed to be in a flowing state. She wore a dark blue, almost blackish dress. You must be Hades. 
the one who claimed the underworld as his own, she said. Indeed. It is a pleasure to meet you. The pleasure is all mine. What can I help you with today? I wish to talk with you about the future of the underworld. You see I have certain plans that I wish to see come to fruition. And you might play a role in those plans. I see. And how do I play a role in those plans? I wish to modify the way souls have to travel to arrive in the underworld. I also wish to combine the river with a river of my own creation that serves as a defensive measure. Styx looked at Hades with surprise. Did you just say, you want to create a river of your own? Indeed. The river will have special properties and will act as a line of defense and primary sorting. The details are not yet finished. But if what I have in mind comes to pass, then I would like to have this river flow together with the river Styx for a time and then leave to continue its journey. I understand. You want to ask me if I would be alright with allowing another river to flow inside or beside me. And you think that wouldn't be a problem. You misunderstand. This river has no deity like you are. It will have special properties that function on their own. Then what would change for me? The only thing that would change would be that you gain certain properties. This is of course not final, but the details will be discussed in the future when I get to designing the river. Hmm, I agree. I can't sense any lie from you. But I would still like it if you swear on me that you are not trying to trick me. Certainly. I swear on the river sticks that I am not trying to trick her in any way. Thunder was heard but nothing else happened. I see. Good then. Can you at least tell me what you plan on doing with this river, Styx asked. I plan on having the river act as the entrance to the underworld. No matter who it is, they will have to get a ride on the river to enter. This of course costs something. The only ones who can come in for free, are the souls of the deceased. After they arrive I will have the river flow through a special dimension of mine, the shadow dimension, where my soldiers reside. They will act as a major defense. The river will be saturated with special souls that devour those who come unannounced or uninvited or don't have the necessary funds. Fascinating. I am looking forward to this river of yours. Chapter 42, Wedding Thank you everyone for writing so many things. I have never had that many comments in one chapter. So it seems that for Hades to stay in DC Universe for now and build the underworld, has won. But Bleach was a close second place. So here's what I'll do. I will write another important Greek mythological event, that is very important and works well in this case and then have him go to Bleach after that. I liked all the other ideas as well. One Piece was in third place. And I will have Hades go there to research DF and Haki. It had been a few weeks since the war and the Olympians had taken control. The New Order had established itself and Zeus was very busy. He made sure to meet representatives from other pantheons to make sure no one took some of their territory. He had finally decided to marry Métis. A grand celebration was to be held and lo and behold. Hades was invited as well. And you might imagine he would never go there right? Wrong. There was no chance Hades would miss this. It would be the last time he would probably see Métis so he had to go and see her for one final time. Besides, there was some good food at the banquet afterwards. Why don't you just come as well, Hades asked Erebus and Nyx's family when they were having dinner together. Over the weeks, Hades had gotten very close to the family. He enjoyed their company and they liked his fresh energy. He fitted right in with the family. Thanatos was the one who seemed to enjoy Hades' company the most. Their shared divinity of death was the reason for that. It was not a romantic feeling, but more like a brother. At the moment he told them about the marriage of Zeus and Métis. Are we invited? asked Hypnos. No, but neither am I. So what, I'm still going. And if I'm going then you can too, Hades stated. Hades had never been invited to any event on Olympus. Or maybe he was but he never got any invitation because they couldn't enter the underworld. Eh, whatever. 
you can't just invite others to a celebration you're not even invited yourself, said Nix. She had taken some form of a mother figure of Hades. Even though he did not need something like that, he still liked the gesture and thought it funny. I can't. No, you can't. That is not proper, said Nix. Proper? And who cares about that? I am going to that party and that is that. Nothing more to it. It's not like I'm intruding on foreign relations or something. Oi oi, can we go? I always thought it would be fun to attend a party like that. We never go to parties. Why do you think that is Thanatos? Hypnos asked his brother. Because no one likes you, his brother answered. What? How can you say that? Don't you like me? It's my duty as a brother not to answer this question, Thanatos said in a stoic monotone voice. Hey ah! Uh, that is so mean Thanatos. Mooum, Thanatos is bullying me again. Stop it you two. You are embarrassing me in front of our guest, Nix said. Erebus was smiling. He enjoyed these talks and he was happy that Hades had brought them back together. It was very rare in their family. He knew that Nix thought so too. And besides, he had slowly transformed into a fanboy, but no one knew that yet, so please don't tell anyone. Ah, come now Nix. You know that Hades doesn't mind. He practically belongs to the family anyway, Erebus said. On Olympus the preparations were complete and the guests were waiting for the bride and groom to arrive. The wedding would take place in a vast, open area of Mount Olympus, with the heavenly clouds forming a majestic backdrop. The area chosen was surrounded by lush gardens and beautiful marble structures. Rich shades of gold, silver, and deep blues, representing the sky and stars, were to be seen everywhere. They served to represent Zeus and his divinity as the god of the sky and lightning. Accents of ivory and pale pink would add a touch of elegance and romance. The gardens were adorned with exotic and ethereal flowers such as celestial lilies and ambrosia roses, which emit a heavenly fragrance. Garlands of laurel leaves, which are sacred to both Zeus and Métis, would be intertwined with the blooms. The venue was illuminated by thousands of softly glowing, floating orbs that mimic stars, creating a magical and enchanting atmosphere. These mystical lights would hang from the trees and float throughout the area. And as the wedding was held close to evening the slowly descending sun added to the magical atmosphere. A pair of ornate thrones for Zeus and Métis were placed at the center of the venue, made of shimmering gold and encrusted with celestial gemstones. An intricately carved and decorated altar would stand in front of them, symbolizing the union of the couple. These would only be temporary as we know. The future of Olympus was different than what it seemed right now. Golden-winged heralds would be placed around the area, they were ready to announce the arrival of the two main cast of the night. Musicians playing harps, lyres, and flutes were entertaining the guests and creating an otherworldly atmosphere. A lavish feast was prepared with ambrosia and nectar, the food and drink of the gods. A grand banquet table, decorated with gold and silver tableware, would be set with an array of divine dishes. To celebrate the union of Zeus and Métis, the sky would be filled with celestial fireworks that would explode into breathtaking patterns, accompanied by displays of lightning and thunder, symbolizing Zeus' power. All the guests were in good spirits and talked with each other. The atmosphere was lovely and everyone was waiting for the, the bride and groom to arrive. The wedding was over so now they were waiting for them to come and start the feast. Among the guests were also Hecate and Nemesis. These two had been trying to get an audience with Hades for the past weeks. They were not interested in being under Zeus' rule. Hecate could already see the signs of a bad ruler and it hadn't even been a month. But what was she supposed to do? Neither she nor Nemesis could enter the underworld. They hoped to find him attending the wedding at least but so far they were unlucky. So did Nix manage to convince Hades that it was not right to barge in a wedding celebration unannounced and uninvited? No, of course not. He just forgot the time it started and ran late. What should we do, Hecate? Time is running out. After Zeus has had his thirst for intercourse satiated, 
he will begin to look into stabilizing his rule. So we had to either submit by then or talk with Hades. Otherwise, we will have a problem. I know that, Nemesis. But none of my methods to enter the underworld are proving to be successful. Also, the entrance from Tartarus is blocked. There is nothing I can do. The two were trying to find a way to get a message to Hades when the crowd went silent and then started to murmur. Gods and goddesses, I proudly present Lord Zeus and his wife, Lady Métis. Cheers and shouts sounded from all around and everyone was happy. They pushed all the bad memories to the back of their mind and simply enjoyed themselves. Zeus walked to the front. His wife, Métis held his hand and smiled brightly. They reached their respective thrones and sat down, giving everyone else the sign to sit down. I am excited to welcome you all to the wedding feast and I hope you will all enjoy. In front of the room, where the two thrones stood, a shadow extended and black steam rose from it. The smell of death and decay accompanied the smoke. And then a figure slowly rose from the shadow. When the figure fully became visible, everyone knew who it was that had intruded on this feast. Hades had come to Olympus although he had never shown himself before. Many saw this as a bad omen, especially Métis who up to this day, had not been punished for plotting against Hades all those years ago. Hades' attire was quite formal and extravagant, with a collar that spans all the way to his upper chest, and badges decorated on the left and right side of his coat. He wore long black jeans and a pair of shoes filled with square patterns. Hades had asked Nyx to create his suit from Roar but in black this time. He might not care about things but to arrive at a wedding in white was not his style. He had class after all. So he just arrived late and stole all of Zeus' thunder when he was about to give a big speech. Ah, shit. Am I late? Hades asked. Yes. But still, I am glad you could make it brother, Zeus said. Sure you are. Well, at least dinner hasn't started yet. Hades walked across the room picked a chair and then dragged it across the room to the other end of the banquet table. Twitching brows could be seen all over the room. Hades' lack of interest and respect was a problem for many. Now that the feast can begin, let us not waste any more time. Please enjoy yourselves, Zeus said. The food was godly, pun intended, and Hades really liked it. It was not every day that Olympus saw such a grand marriage. Although the next one was coming soon. After a few hours of eating and drinking alone, some of the minor gods tried to approach Hades and enter into a conversation with him. It didn't work though as he was uninterested in entertaining them and just bluntly stated what he thought about them. It made him very unpopular amongst most guests, but who the f asterisk ck cares? Lions don't concern themselves with the opinion of sheep. That's just how it was. Two female goddesses approached Hades as he was eating and sat down next to him. He could feel that they were not interested in garnering favor. So he actually lay down his food and looked at them. Ah, we know each other. Agate was it. So are you finally ready to ask me what you wanted? It's Hecate my lord and I am indeed interested in having a conversation with you. Go ahead. What we have to say is rather delicate so. Then erect a sound barrier with your magic or something, I don't care but please come to the point. I don't care for the useless decorum. The truly necessary ones are fine, but speaking around the truth just bores me. I understand. I shall speak bluntly then. My lord, Nemesis, and I were wondering whether it would be possible to seek residence inside the underworld. We are ready to do what? Let me stop you there. First off it is indeed possible to seek residence in the underworld once it has been completed. However, only those I approve of may get that privilege and everything that comes with it. So there is no need to give me anything. As for allowing you two to live in the underworld. I have no problem with that. I can see you are not happy with Zeus as ruler of Olympus. Now. Should you choose to live in the underworld you will have to accept all its rules and conditions that come along with it. And what would those rules and conditions be, asked Nemesis. You are not allowed to speak about any secrets that you experience or see to anyone. 
This mostly concerns the library that I am going to create as well as the security measures. You must be a part of the society of the underworld. This means that while you may live wherever you want, you have to contribute something, no matter how small. Only then will you truly be a part of the underworld. I think these terms are perfectly acceptable, Hecata said. Once again she was surprised after speaking with Hades. It was as she thought, he was the one she had been waiting for. A just ruler and someone she would be able to rely on to have her back, as long as she had his as well. That is how he was with friends and allies. I agree with those terms as well, Nemesis said. Good, then welcome in advance to the underworld. You are two of the first citizens. When I'm finished with the underworld, I will call you to see and choose a place to stay there. Chapter 43, Time Skip Three years have passed by and life took its course like it usually does. The Olympians have been doing what they do best, nothing. Well, that is not entirely true, Zeus, the king of gods, the sky father, has done some things and it is a wonder that he is married. We are going to talk about Zeus' actions later though and concentrate on our main character Hades for now. How did he spend the years? He has had quite some interesting years. Overall, he focused mainly on finishing the underworld. He had to get this business started. He had multiple requests to live with him when he was finished. Not many, mind you. Two were Hecate and Nemesis. Hades had checked to make sure they were not planning anything. But after he was sure and they had agreed to his requests by swearing on the river Styx, he was happy. Not because swearing on the river Styx was fully binding, no because he also took an oath from them with his power to make sure they truly kept what they promised. On the plus side, Hecate was truly a good fit to live in the underworld. She was similar to Hades in a sense. Not in overall power, but in her attitude and character. She had some similarities in terms of divinities so they understood each other well and became fast friends. Apart from Hecate and Nemesis, Hades had also gotten requests from both Hypnos and Thanatos. That was mostly due to Hades telling the family his ideas and plans for the underworld. Hypnos was instantly on board and almost begged to be allowed to live there. Hades allowed it, on the same conditions as Hecate and Nemesis. Thanatos was also eager, but he didn't show it. He seemed to like anything Hades does so far. And he was not certain whether Thanatos had the hots for Hades. He had made it clear that he was perfectly straight and Thanatos said that he had no interest in intercourse or love at all. He was just strangely fascinated by Hades and seemed to be pulled in by him. He liked what Hades had planned and after Hades told him that he would welcome it if Thanatos would also come to live there, he instantly accepted. Someone who did beg, was our all-time favorite primordial, Erebus. When Hades was finished and showed the entire family around, he was on the ground begging Hades to accept him as a citizen. The river he cried when Nyx pulled him away was, well, unsightly. Hades told everyone, that he would love it if they would either move the night palace into the underworld or let him build a palace for them to stay for holidays or whenever they liked. Nyx was perfectly fine with that and accepted Hades' generous offer. He had accepted them all as his family as well. They were more family than his siblings and mother ever were and they had accepted Hades as a part of their family long ago, without Hades knowing about it. Hemera and Aether were all for it after they met Hades. He really did fit right in with his elegant but still humorous attitude. Hades was sitting with everyone at the dining table inside the night palace. The entire family had been gathered as Hades had asked them that he had something to announce to them. The entire family was sitting at the table after eating dinner and was waiting for Hades to say what he wanted. So Hades. Do you have anything to tell us? Like why your eyes changed and shine whenever you don't have your eye patch on, Aether asked. Oh yes, I also wondered about that. What are those Hades? asked Hemera. Don't pry children. If Hades wishes to tell us then he will do that whenever he wishes, Nyx reprimanded her children. She was ever the elegant and regal woman. No, I also want to know. Is it similar to your six eyes? Hypnos asked. 
why would they be similar? That would make them redundant, Thanatos said with his monotone voice. Ha 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 ha. I will tell you all. No problem. It is nothing special really. I took some time off in between building the underworld to practice with my divinities. My divinities of boundaries and death are my most distinctive ones. After practicing with them for a while I found out that I should be able to take my perception to the next level. I thought about life and death and how connected they were. The only thing that separated them was essentially, a barrier. Now I thought something that was so interconnected, there had to be something that showed that they were connected. After searching and getting closer I finally found it just last month. Death is indeed visible in all things. There are what I call lines of death and points of death. Death emerges to the surface of anything that exists as lines of death, and cutting along them will result in death, regardless of the constitution or properties of the object. Now points of death are from where all lines of death seem to flow, resembling blood vessels. There can be a number of them on an object, and, whereas the lines are where things die easily, the points are death itself. These new eyes seem to be the result of my wish to see death and be able to affect it. And let me tell you, they are truly marvelous if you understand what they can do. What Hades was describing were the mystic eyes of death perception. When he took a break from building the underworld he tried to advance in both his divinity of death and boundaries. So he came up with the theory that he could replicate and even surpass these eyes from the type moon anime. It was a long journey but he did manage to create them for himself. He was so very proud of himself. But this is not what I was trying to tell you today, Hades continued. I come bringing you good news. The underworld, is completed. Wait. Wait you're serious. That's amazing, Hades. Can we see it? How did it turn out? Calm down, calm down. I wanted you all to come, not just to tell you this. I wanted to show you all around the underworld. You will be the first to see it. What do you say? And so they began their tour all around the underworld. And to tell everyone how it looks, we are also going on the tour. Let us get started with the highway. The idea behind the highway was to create a sub-dimension that acted as a way of travel. You entered an ender portal in your vicinity and then arrived at a station located in the highway dimension. This station, however it was named, would then offer any form of transportation that you wished to get from one point in the highway to another. What were some of the transportation methods then? There was the chance to simply take another portal to another station that would then lead you to the respective ender portal which in turn would take you back to the biome you wanted to in the underworld. This was the fastest way to travel and might be the preferred way in the future. But the longer you use something, the more likely you are to wish for something else. And that was possible in the highway. If you were not in a hurry to arrive at the other biome, you could either travel fast or take it slow. A slow method was a stagecoach for example. Stations offered stagecoaches that you could use by yourself, if you knew how to, or you could have a driver that took you to the right station. Another method was horse riding or riding any form of animal or monster that was available. And there was a wide assortment of mounts to choose from. There were horses, as mentioned, lions, tigers, bears, ostriches, mythological creatures like some Pokemon and many many more. A fast option to travel included but was not limited to, a variety of cars, buses, motorbikes, speedboats, or even planes. Yes. The highway was not limited to transportation that was on the ground. And what's more, there were also scooters, bicycles, sailing boats and if you wanted you could also walk. Now, how was all of that possible? Was there not a monstrous traffic jam inside the highway dimension? The answer to that is no. The highway is not like the highways that humans use in modern times. It is also not like in the Star Wars universe where there are multiple lanes atop one another. The highway was a sub-dimension, which meant that it was big. And when he said big, Hades meant very big. There were forests should you choose to go hiking or drive a bicycle, there were giant rivers and seas for boats and wide skies for planes. 
noise was non-existent in the highway dimension. Sound could still be heard but noise could not. This made it a nice place to stay, however, it was not allowed to begin living on the highway. You could take your time, but to just settle was not allowed. And it was not necessary. The underworld offered much more than what could be found on the highway. Hades had created a system that helped people communicate with each other. The royal palace of Hades was located in the centermost part of the underworld. This was section zero. Counting from there would be different districts of different biomes. The biome where the palace was located was called the royal biome. This just made it easier to name all the other biomes. Each biome that lay around that one, had a name and a respective number. For example, the biome that Hades had created next to the palace was called the spa or bathhouse biome. Here you can find everything that is associated with spas, bathhouses, and everything that is associated with it. But more on that later. This biome had the number 01 and it was divided into 10 sections. That meant that should you want to go to one such bathhouse, you would have to tell one of the workers in the station the number of the biome, this time it is 01 and the number of the district, for example, 02. Then the name of your destination would be 0102. This allowed for confusion and to deal with that, there were helpers that knew the respective numbers of each and every biome as well as districts. There were also machines where you could go over pictures and descriptions of many biomes and what they offered. The last thing that had to be said about the highway was that the stations were run by many workers. These workers were going to be of different varieties. We will discuss these workers later. Hades had first planned to create a race whose main purpose was to work and then he had another idea. The souls that came in. They will be used and how this worked exactly will also be gone over later. These workers will be available for everyone that comes to a station. No matter how many people come to one station, there will always be enough workers for each visitor as well as enough space. The station's space grew according to the amount of people that were inside. Overall, Hades was very proud of himself. This was a working subdimension where everything could be transported. He liked it very much. Chapter 44, Biomes I Paradise and Cloud Biome The next order of business was the biomes. These were things that Hades had to plan out before he built a few things. He knew that the underworld had no limit and would grow larger over time. This allowed him to space the biomes out and make them gin or mouse. Each biome was almost as large as a planet, for now. As the underworld grew, Hades could have the biomes grow as well, if he so wished. What were some of these biomes? The first one and also the one that existed throughout the underworld was called the Nether. This was the base state. It had many similarities to the Nether from Minecraft but there was more to it. Apart from all the fungi, Nether rack, soul sand, and of course lava, there were also landscapes made of bones, poisonous lakes, volcanoes and more. Hades also added many materials from all around fiction. But he took the ones that could be dangerous out again. No need for them to get into the blacksmith's hands unless she was present and observed their work. Apart from the base state of the underworld, there were biomes that Hades had especially planted. One such example was the Paradise Biome. This biome was heavily influenced by One Piece. He always admired the art that Oda put into his manga. The Paradise Biome was based on water for the most part. Wide oceans and dangerous waters awaited you there. There was actually a different climate inside this biome that allowed ships to sail from one place to the other. The main living areas were many tropical islands. It was possible to acquire an island and build on it. The number of islands there were? No one except Hades knew and he could tell you that it was enough. On many islands, there were special flora and fauna to be found. Animals that could either be normal to mystical beasts should you wish to live with one. Each island had a port already built. It was not big, however, so should you want to buy a big boat or multiple boats, you had to extend the pier yourself. The Paradise Biome had a taxi service. It was called the Sea Train. The name was obviously taken from One Piece as well. If you wished, 
you could sign up for a subscription and then the sea train would come to your island whenever you wished. It was possible to have the train not come to your island for a few days when you are truly trying to relax. Picture of sea train After boarding such a sea train, it would bring you to wherever you wished. If nothing special was said, it would take you to the cross ship. This was an island from where you could sail anywhere in the paradise biome. What else could you do in the paradise biome? There were many things to do. Swimming, diving, deep sea diving, sightseeing, taking new boats to discover many creatures that live deep down, visiting tourist islands and more. One such tourist attraction was called Water World. This island was one. Big. Water park. That's right. There was nothing quite like it. There were. Water slides in various shapes and sizes, including body slides, tube slides, and raft slides. They included twists, turns, and drops, providing thrilling experiences for visitors. And most of them ended in the sea, where inflatables would pick you up and get you back. Wave pools that simulate ocean-like waves, allowing visitors to swim or float in a controlled environment. There were lazy rivers, for those who rather enjoyed slow-moving, meandering water channels. Kitty pools, these shallow pools are designed for young children and often feature miniature slides, water sprays, and interactive play structures that are safe and age-appropriate. Water playgrounds, interactive play areas with fountains, water jets, buckets that dump water, and various water features for kids to enjoy. Flow riders, dive pools, water cannons, etc. And of course, there were also food and beverage facilities to be found all around the island that offered special foods from all across the world and the universe and multiverse. Cabanas and lounge areas could be found to allow parents to sunbathe and relax should they wish to take a break. And then there were also locker rooms that were more like hotel rooms. They were that large and visitors got keys for the rooms to go back anytime they wished. Let us leave Water World and talk about the last thing that was important in the Paradise Biome. It was an island called Water Dining. This special island was mostly a restaurant that also had a hotel. It was a place that offered couples a good time. The food was divine and fish-themed. You could get every fish there was on the island. No matter what, if it was a fish dish, you could order it. Apart from that there were also alcoholic non-alcoholic drinks. This was Hades creating a drink that tasted like the alcoholic variant but didn't have alcohol inside. He didn't like it but you never know. The island of water dining was made up of eight giant pillars. Inside those pillars, the hotel, Paradise Hotel is located. To get to the reception of the hotel and also to the restaurant, you must first arrive by boat on the welcome land that was the only actual land of water dining. From there you would descend by elevators that take you to the entrance hall of Paradise Hotel. Guests of the hotel will find their breakfast buffet on this floor. The walls are made of see-through diamonds. Hades put some work into creating this special material. It was diamond glass. A material that allowed guests to watch the sea life as they ate. The hotel rooms were all located inside the pillars. All the rooms looked the same as they were top quality. Apart from rooms, there were also gyms and spas to be found in the towers. Everything was made to give guests the best time. If you take the elevator and press the 300th floor, which is the top floor, you arrive at the entrance to the restaurant for which water dining is famous for. It only serves lunch and dinner. A small path takes you to the center atop the island from where you have marvelous views and can enjoy the best food that Paradise Biome has to offer. Picture of Paradise Hotel Let us talk about the next biome. This biome was called the Cloud Biome. And just as the name would suggest it was a biome that was situated above the clouds. Hades built this once again thinking about one piece. Everything that wanted to come here had to go by boat. The entrance to the cloud biome was a very big station which floated on clouds. You would take the ender portal to come to this station and then would be given one of many boats. This time it was not possible to use any sort of motor vehicle. No trains, motor boats, planes, or anything like that. 
the top priority in the cloud biome was peace and quiet. This did not mean that you couldn't have fun, it just meant that usually the cloud biome was a place of healing. After getting a sailing boat, you would begin the journey towards the gate that protected the cloud biome. Every biome has such a gate, but the cloud biome has a very notable one. It was called Heaven's Gate and looked just like the one from One Piece. Picture After passing the Heaven's Gate, there lay the different districts before you. One of the notable districts was the Health District. As the name would suggest, this district has everything that can help your health. It is an ironic district to have inside the underworld, but Hades liked it this way and so it shall be. The Health District had hospitals, clinics, and more. Here you could have anything treated. From a broken arm or being sick up to cancer or missing limbs. Nothing was impossible here. Psychiatries could be found with psychiatrists who were interested in seeing your problems solved and not in ripping you off. Picture of Health District It was possible to live in the Health District, but only if you were a patient in any of the available facilities. Health increase was guaranteed 100% and you would leave happier and healthier than ever before. A special place for children was created, with what was called the Cloud Castle. This was every parent's dream playground. Why was it the dream for the parents you ask? Because everything was made out of clouds. There was no chance of hurting yourself there. Did you fall off the top of the castle? Don't worry, a cloud will wait for you on the ground. It was ingenious. Another district in the cloud biome was of course the living arrangements. There were many such places available and also a hotel for the tourists or visitors that came from another biome. These houses and hotels were located in Lovely Street. Once again stealing from Ikairo Oda and using his creation for himself. But did Hades care? No. He was an evil man through and through. All clouds inside the cloud biome had calming effects on people. It had soothing effects to just lie down on one of those clouds and take your mind off things. A truly evil god he was indeed. Picture of Lovely Street And as it is custom for all of the biomes there was also a restaurant slash hotel to be found in the cloud dimension. It was lazily called Sky Hotel and Restaurant. Similar to the Paradise Hotel in the Paradise Biome the Sky Hotel had everything you could want of a hotel situated in many domes. These domes were situated around a larger dome that spawned a big tree on top of it. This center dome was the restaurant and after every dinner, it was possible to climb on top of the tree and watch the Chinese lanterns that could be bought and sent into the sky, illuminating it and granting a nice spectacle. Picture of Sky Hotel Chapter 45 Biomes 2, Waterland and Entertainment. Now we will cover the next biome that is really the last biome that Hades has created up to this point. It is called the Wonderland. This biome is for children and has pretty much everything children could dream of. Hades was unsure of how to treat the souls of children that came to the underworld. Going by logic, he would have to sort them into Elysium. However, he saw that is not quite right. The Elysium was indeed for good people but it was mainly designed for grown UPS. Therefore Hades decided to designate an entire biome to children. This meant that children, no matter where they came from, could live there for as long as they wished. The idea was to make this biome for deceased children only but this changed very quickly. Hades expected children of habitants of the underworld to also be interested in this biome, so he changed the rules a bit. The souls of deceased children would arrive in the underworld on the same river as all the other souls, but their path would derail and they would be brought to the clothing area. This clothing area gave each and every child a physical body with which it could interact. Therefore Hades could make rules that allowed for others to get to the Wonderland biome as well. Now what could be found in Wonderland? Think of anything that a child would want and you will find it. Toys Toys are a classic choice for children of all ages. They might want action figures, dolls, building blocks, board games, video games, or other toys that align with their interests. And there was an almost unlimited amount of toys to be found in the play district. There were however limitations to certain things. 
Hades was unhappy with small children spending their time gaming the entire day. So he took video games into a separate place that was for children who were older and had already lived a certain amount of years in Wonderland. Playgrounds Children often want time to play and have fun, whether it's at a playground, in the backyard, or indoors with friends and family. These playgrounds were top-notch and had great variations. To make everything safe, a platoon of spritzies and bellossoms all around the Wonderland and the playgrounds especially. In case someone needs healing or care in general. Pictures of Playgrounds Orphanage slash Daycare This was the center and most important part of Wonderland that Hades built. Children generally crave attention and quality time with their parents or caregivers. They want to feel valued and loved. Thinking about all the children who would not have a nice childhood or died early and never got to experience the most important thing there was in the world, that is care would get it in spades in Wonderland. Pictures of orphanage slash daycare, from outside. Pictures from the inside. Caretakers were generally women who expressed a desire to take care of children. These women were also souls who had the choice to go to Elysium but decided to go to Wonderland instead. They had the freedom to go to Elysium whenever they wished, as long as there were enough caretakers in Wonderland. School There was a school in the underworld that taught children of all ages up to college degrees. But this was not located inside Wonderland as it welcomed children who weren't native to Wonderland and otherwise lived with their families somewhere in the underworld. The school will be talked about at a later date as it has its own biome. Children would be teleported to school and also had the choice to sleep there should they wish. But most didn't want to go to school anyway in the first few centuries and those were allowed to stay in Wonderland for as long as they wished until they were ready to advance. Pets Wonderland was still a biome and therefore had its own flora and fauna. There were a handful of animals that were native in Wonderland. Among them were some Pokemon like Mariup, Lillipup, Jiraki, Shaman, Teddy Ursa, Skitty, Tijapai, Evie and Mew. Of course, there were also countless animals like bunnies, puppies, kittens, sea otters, pandas, red pandas, elephant shrews, quakas, pikas, sea dragons, owls, bee hummingbirds, and more. Needless to say, all these animals were not dangerous, their instincts that aimed at defense were turned off and they didn't need any food as they lived off of the energy inside Wonderland. Pictures of creatures living in Wonderland No one grew older inside Wonderland. In the underworld in general it was possible to age if you were not dead somehow like gods and their offspring. Demigods were allowed to stay in the underworld and would still age normally. Underscore 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 The next biome in the underworld is called the Entertainment Biome. Although it was called a biome and had a lot of space, it was more like on Massive City where everything that could be found in there served entertainment purposes. Now when it says everything, it really means that. There were things from board games like chess to things like racing tracks or arenas to hold fights. And it would only grow in variety over the years. Space was never a problem for Hades. If something would need a lot of space, then he would simply extend the space inside the room or attach it to a sub-dimension. Let us go over some of the noteworthy things. The entire entertainment city was structured like a gigantic mall. It was an entire city after all, so it had to be very big. Entertainment City had two entrances that were as wide as four A380 planes. When you entered you were welcomed by workers who offered directions and introductions to Entertainment City. Each certain entertainment was to be found inside one such shop. It was similar to walking into a mall and then searching for cooking utensils. You went into a specific shop that had such utensils and then went to other shops. And it worked similarly in Entertainment City. Let us say you were interested in board games, particularly in chess. Then you were directed to District 0321. That meant that chess which is a board game, is located on Floor 3 and Section 21. Picture of Entertainment City Yet, when it was said that Entertainment City was a biome in itself, it was meant literally. As mentioned there were many things to do here. You could go and play board games of any kind. 
it was also possible to attend tournaments in your favorite sport or game. All the tournaments and competitions were held in the centermost part of Entertainment City. There were racing tracks for horses, cars, motorbikes, ships, planes, and all the other varieties. You could gamble in the casinos, attend different shows like a circus or theater, play any sport that you could think of or watch others play that sport. For everything, there was something that could be found and if there wasn't, then it could be added. Picture Stadiums Something special and a central part of the entertainment district was the arenas. There were countless of those and because fighting inside the underworld wasn't allowed, that was where potential disputes were handled. The Wizard Duel A place for wizards to duel and fight each other. The space and surroundings could be changed as one wished. Picture Robot Fights People who didn't wish to get down on each other physically could solve their disputes or arguments by commanding robots to fight. Picture Tron Arena Those who liked to fight in a futuristic type of setting could use the tools and vehicles from the game Tron. This also meant that you could die should you lose. Picture And now for the cooler and grander arenas. There were arenas where you could fight entire wars with someone or against a simulation. And where did such wars take place? In subdimensions that created what you wanted. One such subdimension was the Naval War Arena. This beauty simulated naval fights. You could input the respective age the enemies were supposed to be from and then use whatever navy you wanted to fight them. These fights were fought for real. How did this work? In the beginning, each player or contender had a fixed amount of resources. These resources were used to create different types of golems. These golems of the same type all looked the same. You could buy different types of golems at the start of the war and then depending on how you handled your resources and how the war went you could create more and different types. In the naval war arena this would go something like this, you had a fixed amount of energy that was necessary to create golems. Let us take 1000 for example. To create a sailor you would spend one energy and to create a navy soldier, you had to spend two to three energy units. If you wanted to buy a general you could spend up to 500 or more energy at a time and then you also had to buy ships and weapons for yourself. That gave the war simulation a real feel to it and made it very diverse. You would have to account for the tides, the weather, your ship and weapons and the manpower you had. Needless to say, all of this took place inside the sub-dimension and you were in a water world that had islands and maybe land. Picture And the creme de la creme and also one of Hades' favorites was the space arena. This took every war simulation to space and added a ton of new resources and units as well as weapons and vehicles that were available. It was bunkers and Hades was very proud of himself. Pictures To round this biome up, we of course also have to talk about all the other things such as hotels where visitors could spend the night, restaurants of all kinds, security that was taken care of by many shadows of Hades' army and of course the last thing. The Amphitheater Hades made it similar to the one from Overlord. In the Amphitheater, you could watch the stars as well as shows and more that were projected in the air right below the night sky. Picture Chapter 46, Biomes 3 Desert and Spa Biome, Tree of Knowledge Next up, the Desert Biome This biome has something very important, the bank. We are not going to spend a lot of time talking about this bank and only cover the most important things. The bank is linked to the treasury of the underworld. That is where Hades stores most of his ever-growing wealth. Many dangerous metals and minerals could be found there and of course all sorts of elixirs, potions, and other resources that one could think of. The bank was as the name said, where people, but mainly gods could store goods that were valuable to them. This could include special artifacts, gold, magical objects, and more. The bank was secure and nothing in existence could enter the vaults unless Hades wanted to. It was also not limited to the Greek pantheon. Gods from all pantheons could deposit things here and have an account. This was one of the things that cost something to use though. Most of the things in the underworld were free for those that Hades allowed to stay here but the bank had to be paid for. 
whenever something is to be stored it is checked for any sort of tempering or funny business. And if they are considered safe and not an attempt to enter the treasury, they will be stored. Sorcerers and other mystical and powerful people can also have an account in the bank of course, but to have an account can be expensive, it is the safest place in existence though, so it's worth it. Picture of the bank What else could be found in the desert biome? The desert resort was the main thing that served as a hotel and place to eat and drink. It was built similar to the hanging gardens of Babylon but not exactly the same. It had the oasis in the desert theme. Overall there was not much to say about it. The restaurants where you could eat were located on wide balconies. You would feel like you were in some tropical jungle while you saw the dry desert just outside the resort. The resort also offered a variety of sports that you could do in the desert. Underscore underscore. Let us focus on something very special to Hades. The spa biome. Why was this special to Hades? Because he has recreated and improved upon one of the future seven wonders of the world, the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. When he said that the desert resort was similar to the gardens then this was the real deal and so much more. First of all, it was massive. Like close to entertainment city massive. No matter what if it had to do with water relaxation and spas, it could be found. Water was everywhere. You could go swimming in pools, rivers, or the canal. All over you could find gardens with exotic plants and small sitting or lying areas where you were served tea and other beverages as well as light food. If you were hungry though, worry not as many little restaurants served you whatever you wished, but most of the dishes were green and healthy. You could of course also order fast food if that is something you crave. Apart from swimming, eating and enjoying the scenery you also had the chance to enjoy massages that were simply, divine. You could visit steam rooms, saunas, or silent areas to sleep. As it is custom in almost all biomes, there is also a hotel that offers guests and other visitors the time of their lives. No matter what you wish to do, there was a good chance you could get it. However, the theme of the Hanging Gardens of Babylon was always maintained. This meant that you could not get a plane flight to see the sights, but you could get a nice enjoyable boat ride through the canals and into the waters all around the biome. Hades was very fond of this place and would probably be seen here many times. He needed time for himself and that was the best way in his opinion to spend the time. And now finally we come to the second best creation that Hades has produced in the underworld. The Tree of Knowledge Picture from the outside The Tree of Knowledge was fascinating for many different reasons. For one it was a monstrously tall tree that carried dimensions as branches. It was in general one giant library. The purpose of this library was to store any knowledge that entered the underworld. When souls enter the underworld through the river of souls that is the entrance, their entire life and everything they experienced is copied. The tree of knowledge takes and stores all the knowledge of the deceased and sorts it into the respective parts of the library. This means that entire life experiences and life knowledge will be stored. All their skills will be recorded and a how-to book will be created. Should such a book already exist, additions will be created or mistakes will be corrected. Librarians are necessary to take care of everything here. One librarian is responsible for one branch each. More would be impossible. Each branch of the tree covers one specific topic. This could be cooking or gardening, biology, physics, maths or anything else. The more time passes, the more souls come to the underworld, the more knowledge is recorded and the bigger the library becomes. The habitants of the underworld are allowed to enter the tree of knowledge and read in a cozy corner whilst having some tea and biscuits. Taking books outside is illegal and will be punished. Outsiders or visitors are not allowed inside the tree of knowledge. This is a very special privilege that only those whom Hades has allowed to permanently live in the underworld. Those who think they can get rich by copying books and then selling them in the overworld will be punished. This is a major offense that is punishable by death if proven to be done purposefully. The reason for this harsh treatment is due to the fact of what you can find in the tree of knowledge. There is information about anything, also the happenings of the world. So secret business deals can be found intrigues, history, 
plots and all sorts of betrayal and lies naturally as well. So using this can lead to massive and maybe dangerous circumstances. Just imagine a president taking a look at the information that is available on all his competitors as well as enemies from other countries, that would make him a very dangerous man and that is why only permanent residents are allowed to use the tree of knowledge. There might be special circumstances where someone or maybe many are allowed a peek at something very particular that could help them. This would have to be something very important for Hades to allow something like that. Should a book be taken from the library the book will simply vanish and reappear in its intended place. Pictures of the inside Two branches of the tree of knowledge are special as they hold not a library per se, but schools. Both of those hold a sub-dimension in which a school is located. The first school is for children up to the college level. College and high school are located in the second sub-dimension. Picture of school Picture of high school slash college. The seasons change over the year and students have dorms inside the school. Taking many ideas from Hogwarts, Hades decided to make the schools alive. The school helps children either find their way to classes, stops any form of bullying or helps them in other ways. We can find all sorts of activities to keep the students happy apart from learning. Doing sports like soccer, tennis, or lacrosse. Some playgrounds for the smaller children, Quidditch, yes he introduced the sport, swimming, practice of magic or other powers and more. It is impossible to add everything that the schools offer but just know that they were the best of the best. On the very top of the tree of knowledge, a restricted section can be found where only Hades and those he allows have access to. This has knowledge of secrets that are important to the universe or the multiverse, powerful magic books, etc. Chapter 47, The River of Souls Finally, we leave the biomes and come to an important thing. The River of Souls The River of Souls acts as the entrance to the underworld. Originally the underworld was surrounded by the River Styx. Hades talked with Styx and told her about his plans to create the River of Souls. And after discussing this they agreed on it. Hades made this river with many things in mind. At first, there was access for souls. Unlike the mythology version, Hades had no interest in stopping souls from entering. He didn't want them to become lost souls and wander along the river of souls because they didn't have drachmas. No, he decided to make the entrance free for souls. But only those that are deceased. Not living beings. Those had to pay exorbitant prices to enter. Karen will be the one commanding the boat across the River of Souls and bring the souls to the underworld. The river first flows around the entire underworld once, to collect all the souls that enter all over the place. After that Karen commands the ship to flow along the river. The River of Souls was very important as it housed souls. These souls were artificial souls that were created over the course of time. The purpose of these souls that are inside the river is the purpose of devouring those who entered uninvited or unwanted. That's right. The souls have the ability to check whether someone is allowed access to the underworld. If someone doesn't pay or forces himself in, they will be devoured by them and all their belongings will go to Karen. And those that have been devoured get turned into the same souls that live in the river. To be condemned to roam the river for intruders and enemies. The River of Souls follows a set path through the underworld that leads it through different dimensions and biomes. None of those that have been discussed are the ones the river passes through. The river passes through the shadow dimension. A dimension created by Hades, that is connected to his personal shadow. This is the dimension where all his shadow soldiers live and reside. They act as the main defense and attack force, in the off chance that something goes wrong or they are under attack. Those who are on Karen's boat and ride through the shadow dimension will feel great depression, oppression, and even fear. It is entirely dark and strange sounds can be heard all around. All around shining eyes can be seen, looking at the souls or passengers and judging their threat. The river then leaves the shadow dimension and gets to the sorting area. This area is a long part of the river of souls. Its purpose is to sort the souls into either Elysium if they were good or the field of punishment if they were bad. The third option is for the children. 
they are transferred to Wonderland directly via teleportation. Those who wish to go to one of the districts or biomes stay on the boat with Karen until they finally reach the arrival district. That is the place where you can choose where to go. It brings you directly to the highway from where you can go anywhere. Now let us talk about the Elysium and the Field of Punishment. Those are the two important areas in the underworld. Although they are not fields but subdimensions to the underworld. The Elysium is similar to what you might expect and therefore not very interesting. Those who have been good and tried to make an effort their entire life go there to spend eternity there. They have access to food, drinks, entertainment, and all the other things that you could hope for. There are activities to partake in, people to meet, places to see and more. However, there are two options that those who go to Elysium can take. It is possible for them to work in the underworld if they so choose. Where they can work is up to their talents or interests. Elderly women or women in general are allowed to work in Wonderland if they wish, others can choose to work in one of the many restaurants or hotels in different biomes. The choice is theirs but the Elysium is the place where they can stay if they want. Another option for them is reincarnation. Those that have been good have the choice to get reborn again in the world. They are allowed to make a choice on where to reincarnate. They are not allowed to choose whom or in what family. That is up to chance and they will have to make do with what they get. That is the general gist of things for those who go to Elysium. Now the fields of punishment. Hades took a long time to design this dimension. He knew that many humans would not get to go to Elysium. And since he was in the DC universe, he would have lots of souls come to the fields of punishment. Therefore he had to make the dimension very functional. This dimension is located inside the tomb citadel. An impregnable fortress that is guarded by Hades' divinity of boundary as well as thousands of shadow soldiers and others. Troops are also located around the entrance of the tomb citadel, to make it even safer. Picture of Tomb Citadel What could be found in the fields of punishments? There was nothing healthy or beautiful or remotely nice to be found. There were large areas of bones. Lava flowed everywhere and heated up the environment. The air is poisonous and gives the most pain when you breathe it in. Every breath you take feels like it kills you and it is as if thousands of knives puncture you from the inside. Soul sand can be found almost everywhere. It spawns naturally in the field of punishment and has special properties. Soul sand has the effect that every step you take, hurts the soul and since you no longer have a body in the fields of punishment, it hurts even more. A special structure that can be found in the maze of regret. The maze is an endless, ever-shifting labyrinth filled with towering, thorn-covered walls. Souls condemned to this punishment must navigate its intricate passages. No matter where they go, they will wander the entire maze one way or the other. That adds to the punishment and has them experience everything the fields have to offer. But. There is hope. The fields of punishment are called that because their purpose is to punish those who deserve it. However, that is not all they are doing. Just as the maze of regret, the fields of punishment also serve as a way to cleansing. To reach this cleansing, the souls must go through the entire maze. But the maze does not just torture the souls physically and spiritually. It also tortures them mentally. As souls wander through the maze, they encounter ethereal, glowing orbs. When touched, these orbs trigger holographic displays of their past misdeeds, allowing them to relieve their actions from both the perspective of the victim and the perpetrator. These orbs appear until you have seen all the memories millions of times. And you cannot advance the maze before you see them as many times as the maze deems appropriate. Now what about those that liked what they did? What about those who love to see their past actions? Well, as souls progress through the maze, they carry with them a physical representation of their remorse a symbolic weight. The weight increases as they approach the center of the labyrinth, where they must confront the core of their wrongdoing. This weight is not just weight. It carries with it, pain and suffering. It doesn't matter whether you like pain, the dimension takes away your preferences and makes you experience pain that no one likes. The power of boundaries from Hades makes sure that everyone suffers, no matter what they liked or didn't like when they were alive. 
souls must continuously navigate the maze of regret. Even if they reach the center, they are not immediately freed. No now comes the part where they will start to be cleansed. Cleansing is made up of three parts. The first part is called the Isanami. This is an illusion that allows souls to experience and feel all the things that happen inside it. They will be confronted by all those that they have hurt or killed and they will not be let out until they see the wrong in their past actions. That is the only way to get out of Isanami. Isanami can't be tricked by words or tricks. There is no escaping it. Not unless you have truly changed. After Isanami, the next step is the penance field. Just like the penance stare from Ghost Rider, the penance field lets the souls experience all the things they did from the view of their victims. Now it would make sense to have the penance field before the Isanami, but that is not the case. The penance field is only there for suffering. And just like the maze, it doesn't matter if you like your actions or are crazy. Those would not have made it through the Isanami. No those that pass the Isanami, are in their right mind and will experience everything and suffer fully. Now on to the last step. The last step is the full cleansing. This means that they will give up everything that made them who they were, memories, character, likes, dislikes, etc. They will lose everything that made them who they were and leave them in a blank state. To undergo this cleansing, they will have to enter the washing machine of cleansing. The name tells you what it does. Souls go inside the washing machine of cleansing and the machine begins the process of cleansing. Like a normal washing machine, the machine spins at high speeds to get the laundry clean. Only that this time the laundry is the souls and the dirt is their state of being. Their characters, memories, likes, dislikes, emotions, everything is pressed out of them. Now after this process is over they have been fully cleansed. If they have gone through those three steps, they are cleansed souls. What does that mean? These souls have been turned, into a sockeyes. They are like a white canvas, ready to be painted on. What do these Asakais do then? Asakais have a variety of different uses. They can serve as servants in many different households, act as defenders of the realm, fight, be used as building materials, take jobs, and many more. Their look is the same as the Asakais from Bleach. They are white humanoids with teeth as eyes. What happens with those that do not make it through the Izanami? These souls will also get everything stripped from them. But unlike Asakais, they get cursed to a life as piglins. And they are condemned to serve the underworld forever. Chapter 48, The End The last thing to talk about is Hades' palace. He lives in the underworld and has a primary palace in the first district. He built it similar to Asgard where Odin and his family lived. Pictures Generally, here you can find a lot of things that have to do with the organization of the underworld. If there is some kind of problem, then there is a building that can handle it. The palace holds a variety of things that are also open to the public. Such as the conference room. This room is for emergencies and is a room that can hold as many people as it needs. Citizens of the underworld can come here in times of war for example or when something else comes up to discuss it with each other and maybe even ask Hades himself for help. In the future, Hades can also imagine heroes coming here to discuss plans for fighting monsters, but that will not happen often. There is also a giant dining room where Hades invites guests of high esteem. This would include but not be limited to gods from his pantheon and others as well, primordials if they have something to talk about with him, some members of the Endless, some superheroes or maybe even villains, and other guests that Hades thinks are worthy to dine with him. Hades and his family will not live in this palace though. He has created a palace and base for himself and his future family somewhere else. And this place is another dimension. Hades wanted to create something special for himself and his family. He wanted them to have time alone and enjoy themselves if they wished. Hades had lots of responsibilities but he also had plans to get many helpers to deal with most things. So he needed a place to himself. Somewhere, he could do whatever he wished and no one would bother him. So what did he do? Well, 
he focused on his divinity of boundaries and created a dimension that holds, nothing. The literal end. He created an entrance that was guarded by his power inside the palace in the underworld. That way he could come and go whenever he pleased. After he created an entrance, Hades dived right in and began the long task of building his end base. He created a research area, a gym, a kitchen, a dining room, many bedrooms, a spa area with steam room, sauna, and the like, a small treasury, a library, and so much more. He really took his time with it and made it how he enjoyed it. He would spend a lot of time here, so he had to like how it looked. Next to the base, Hades created a small home where his kids would get to live when they were old enough. Should he ever marry, he would need some alone time and not always be around the children. Picture of the children's base. Picture of the end base. Back to Hades and the family of Nix and Erebus. So that was pretty much everything for now, Hades said after he had shown them the last thing. He had been showing them around for the last couple of days and he had still left most parts out. It would simply take too long for him to show them everything. He didn't have that kind of time and patience. He wanted to show them all things but not go into too much detail. They will get to see everything by themselves. No one said anything. Their brains had long stopped working. The sheer number of biomes and activities that were available was breathtaking. And Hades hadn't even shown them everything. It's... Erebus started. Breathtaking, Nix finished. Yeah, the fact that you did all of this in only three years is unbelievable, Thanatos said. Wait, three years? This shouldn't take you this long. Why did it take you three years, Ether asked. He did not know about Hades building everything like a Minecrafter. Hades likes to build everything with his own hands, Hypnos explained to his brother. Yes. I enjoy looking at my work and then thinking about how I built it myself and with my own hands. It will hold memories for me that I will remember forever, Hades said. I understand. So, Hypnos started. Where will we live? You can choose to live wherever you wish. The options are all there and you can decide to pick any one. I will also begin to accept gods that fit, to live here. Two are Hecate and Nemesis as you know. I'll go and visit them soon and tell them that they can settle down here. I find it very generous of you to open the underworld like that Hades. I would not do that personally, especially after what I have seen in the library, Nix said. Oh, I don't just allow anyone to enter. I make sure that those that I allow fit and have no ulterior motives. And then there is also the contract that everyone must sign. The family then each looked for a place to stay and Hades left the underworld to look for Hecate and Nemesis. He had promised them they would be allowed to live there and he would keep his promise. Hades remembered that something was being celebrated on Olympus today. He didn't remember what it was, but he might as well take a look. And who knows, he might find Hecate there as well. So Hades dressed himself and prepared to go to this event that they held on Olympus. He was not the least bit interested in what went on in Olympus, but he could use it to his advantage, so he would do that. With a thought, he dissolved into smoke. On Olympus. All the important gods were invited. It was a grand occasion. Zeus and Hera's first child had been born. Everyone was in high spirits and couldn't wait for the king and queen to come out and show their child. All of Zeus and Hera's siblings were here, almost all. Hades was not here. He had also missed during the wedding of Zeus and Hera. At first, they thought he was going to pull the same stunt as he did during Zeus and Métis' wedding. He never showed up. Zeus was relieved and then he got mad when he understood what it meant. Hades didn't care about his rule at all. Not even in the slightest and Zeus was furious. He would not take this for much longer. The only thing that kept him from doing anything, is the memory of Hades killing Kronos. That memory was still too fresh in his mind. The curse of Damocles had long been broken. Even before he had married Métis, the memories of the war were also starting to fade. Now Zeus only remembered the humiliation he suffered the day Hades made him beg for his help. 
and that was not forgotten. Finally, it was time. The two proud parents came and presented their child to everyone. Everyone. I proudly present to you, the youngest of the Olympians. Our son, Ares, Zeus announced proudly. All over, the congratulations came in and everyone seemed happy that finally someone was born who would also stand higher in the hierarchy than them. And you know this one would be spoilt, he was the first child of Zeus and Hera, the king and queen of Olympus. That one would not turn out right. How sentimental, a voice said from the back of the crowd. Hades had finally come and saw the occasion. It was strange to see this happen and he hadn't even planned to come here for it. But it gave him a great opportunity to give another Hades some recognition. You know, I haven't been this choked up since I got a hunk of moussaka caught in my throat. Unlike the Hades from Disney, here some dared to laugh. And one of them was the woman he had been looking for. Hecate. So this is an audience or a mosaic, Hades said to those that didn't laugh. He then walked up to Zeus and Hera and looked at the infant Ares. Hades was not impressed. While the baby was pretty, that was it. The eyes were already grey, the divinity of war seemed to have already manifested in him. Hades put up a creepy smile and then said to the baby. Hey, baby. I'm your uncle Hades, sadly. Don't worry about me I'm not as bad as they say. But you better stay out of my way before I put you over my knee, understood. Hades could feel the anger coming from Hera and Zeus both. He smirked and then walked away. In Chinese novels they called this, not putting someone in your eye, or something like that. And Hades had mastered the art of not putting someone in his eyes. As they looked at Hades' retreating form, Hera spoke to Zeus. He doesn't respect us at all. We'll have to do something soon. Before his head gets any bigger. His time will come. Believe it. What they didn't see was Hades smirking. Oh Zeus. I am so far ahead of you, it's not even funny. You make your plans. We'll see how that goes for you. The party drew on and Hecate walked towards Hades. He was enjoying the food and drinks while listening to others chatter and exchange rumors. Lord Hades. Hecate, good I wanted to talk to you. Good thing this was going on today right? He he, indeed. What did you want to talk about? It's finished. I beg your pardon. It's finished. The underworld is done. I came to tell you that you and Nemesis can settle down whenever you like. That's, amazing. I was looking forward to that. I can't wait to see what you have been working on all these years. Well it's only been three so far, so it wasn't that long. No, you're right of course. But I am still very interested. Understandable. What is your plan now, if you don't mind me asking? I don't mind. To be honest with you. I don't know. I might start to travel a bit. I am still in need or a butler. And besides that, I want to get a weapon for myself. And then there are some other things that also interest me. Weapon? But don't you have the, broken scythe from Kronos? Sure but I'm not going to use that piece as my weapon. I combined it with a weapon I have and made it stronger, but what I am looking for is something like the symbols of power. My go-to weapon that I carry around all the time. I understand. And where will Oyo look for that? I'm sure the Cyclops would love to make one for you. Nat, they already made me a helmet. A helmet? Hecate asked confused. Yeah. Shortly after the war ended they came to the underworld and gave it to me. They called it the Helm of Darkness. It allows me to become invisible and spreads fear to all though around me. It is quite a good helmet, but there is no war going on right now so I'll probably put it in my treasury. He he he. You talk like a spoiled brat. To think that you still want something else. Well, you're not wrong I guess. But I want a weapon that connects with me on the deepest level. Something that truly represents who I am. Do you get any of this? I understand. And where are you planning on getting that? 
well I know of a place that might have one for me to grab. But I'm not sure what to do first. Butler or weapon? I might have to do do butler first. How would I leave the underworld in the future otherwise? A butler would probably be the correct choice. But you're not going to do that. Eh, we'll see. It's not that crowded and the underworld yet. That might change in the future and I still have my shadows helping me. Whatever you decide, I am happy to help. Thank Hecate. Well then, I'm off. See you in the underworld Hecate and greet Nemesis for me. Chapter 49, Revelations Hades POV The Sphere of the Gods, I asked. Yes. You don't know that do you, Hecate said with a victorious smirk. She was happy that there was finally something that she got over me. I had to smile when I saw her smirk. I enjoyed Hecate's company. There was this deep friendship forming between us that I came to enjoy. Not love, mind you, but I knew that I could count on her and she could count on me. I finally found a friend apart from the family of Nix and Erebus who adopted me. I was in Nix's house, or palace rather. She had built something for herself. I said that if you wanted to make a place for yourself, you would have to make it with your own hands. Those were the rules in the underworld. It was called the Minecraft policy. And she built herself a Jinnah Mao's mansion. At the moment we were in her study where she did her experiments and tried out new spells. I found out that she was a lot stronger than I gave her credit for. How she used her spells and how fast she was in using different spells, that was impressive. She was explaining to me what the sphere of the gods was. I forgot about that and now that she mentioned it. I started to remember. No, I don't. So could you please explain it to me great witch with three heads. I told you not to tell anyone. And I didn't. Stop mentioning it all the time. Why does it give you trauma? Ha 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 ha. No. Ha 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 ha. Stop it. Okay okay calm down, phew. Ha ha, I don't mind your true form. I just like to tease. There's nothing else to do nowadays. The underworld is finished for now, and we're practicing magic so, that's it. There is something you have to do. Zeus has called a meeting of the Olympians, don't you remember? You have yet to go to a single one. Eh, whatever. They can discuss their areas of influence among themselves. Death and the dead don't care about that. In the end, they all come to me anyway. What's with that evil smile? That's my all according to Kaikeku smile. Why are you using Japanese for that? It just works. Now please tell me about the sphere of the gods. The sphere of the gods is a metaphysical reality whose inhabitants exist on a higher plane of existence than the inhabitants of the 52 realities. It is the source of all magic existent, Hecate started her explanation. The source of all magic? Tell me more. At the dawn of creation, magic existed in its raw form within the plane that would become the sphere of the gods. It was promising and pure, as it surrounded the forming multiverse. From that energy, the first magical being shaped herself out of the cosmos. And guess who that is? Hecate looks, smug. Wait. No way, I said. Yes, way. You. Indeed. I'm much more awesome than you give me credit for. I guess I do, you're also older than I give you credit for. Hey. Anyway, moving on. The sphere of the gods is home to most if not all of the gods and immortals that exist outside the multiverse, who each reside in one of eight realms that make up the sphere of the gods. The sphere of the gods is composed of eight realms that each act as a polar opposite to another realm within the sphere of the gods, such as the shining new genesis which acts as the polar opposite to the fiery apocalypse. I'm sure you'll come to see them at one point or the other, considering your power. Each of the realms within the sphere of the gods is directly connected to at least one reality within the orrery of worlds which greatly affects the natures and developments of the universes they are connected to, as well as those in close relative proximity to them. Hmm, interesting indeed. 
what about traveling to those realms? And what is our realm called then? I would be more than interested in meeting some other gods apart from our boring group. Travel between the sphere of the gods and the other planes of existence in the multiverse is normally not possible but can be artificially achieved. Apocalypse is quite advanced. Natural portals to the sphere of the gods exist within the orrery of the world such as our own Mount Olympus serving as a portal to the portion of Skyland that the gods of Olympus reside in. Wait. Are you saying, that we reside in a realm with other gods from other pantheons? Yes. Then why have I never seen any of them? Hmm, I might have to visit them at some point. Might make for some interesting development and meetings. Maybe one of them would fight with me, what do you think? Do not go around fighting gods from other pantheons. That might cause a war to break out and we just finished the last one not too long ago. Didn't seem that much to me. Ugh. You are insufferable. So coming back to the sphere of gods then. The sphere of the gods is also the fount from which all magic flows into the multiverse and grants the gods and those who have godlike abilities their power, making it one of the seven forces of the universe, Hecate finished her explanation. Now I was intrigued. I remembered this from reading about it. The seven forces of the universe were some interesting powers and some of them would fit me well. I am thinking about the death force and the void wind, as well as the sixth note. Wait a moment, the sixth note. Hecate. Quickly tell me what you know about the sixth note, I tell her. I need to know whether my thought is true or not. The sixth note? I don't know anything about that. Why do you ask? Third person POV. Hades stopped talking for a moment. He tried to remember. What did he know about the sixth note? Why did that name, resonate with his soul and make his entire body shiver? He felt his heart rate spike and shoot through the roof. His hands began to tremble. He felt like a little boy who couldn't wait to open his presents on Christmas. Hades had no idea what was happening. His eyes were unfocused and it looked like he was looking beyond this reality. He seemed to be amidst some kind of epiphany, or close before one. Hecate was worried. She didn't know what was happening. Hades was, sweating? That was impossible for a god. How was he sweating? She started to call out his name to get his attention. Hades. Hades. Hecate. I. I'm sorry about that. I'll leave now. I'll see you later. Wait. What happened? Are you all right? Can I help you? And no, I just... I don't know. I'll see you, later. And with that, he left Hecate's mansion and reappeared in his own. He went to the end. That was where he felt safest for now. The training room was built with the maximum safety and strength, his powers could produce for now. And yet the walls were, trembling. Hades shook his head. Get a grip he said and held his head in between his hands. He was, scared. What was happening to him? Slowly his heartbeat calmed down and his hands stopped trembling. He was unsure what happened and he didn't like that. He liked to know what happened at all times. He was usually the one in control of the situation. But now, he was helpless. And that made him mad. He hated that feeling. It was as if he was back in his last life and... Last life? Why would he? Hades shook his head again. He didn't want to think about it for now. He thought of something to take his mind off of this. And then he remembered the meeting Zeus had called. He was also invited. More like he was called upon. But that might help him take his mind off of things and calm him down. So without further ado... Hades disappeared into his shadow. On Olympus, Zeus, Hera, Demeter, Hestia, and Poseidon were all waiting for Hades, as per usual. Zeus was getting mad. His head was hurting since he woke up today and he could not take any shit from Hades or he would probably snap and another war would start. Hades' throne was suddenly covered in darkness and from it, Hades rose. He sat in a perfect position like he had planned it all along. I'm here. 
We can start, he said. I called you all here today to discuss something. Bring in Prometheus. The door to the throne room opened and in walked Prometheus. He seemed happy for some reason but tried to keep a straight face. He walked to the center of the room and bowed his head respectfully. Lord Zeus and other members of the council, thank you for having me. Prometheus, what is the meaning of your visit? Poseidon asked. I have been approached by Lord Zeus in a project which interests me very much. He has tasked me with the creation of man. I am here today to ask for your permission to begin this project and wanted to ask for your help should the need ever arise. What do you mean help? Demeter asked, I have a lot to do with making the fields prosper. That is a lot of work for me alone. Ah yes, Lady Demeter. But think about it. If man walks the earth, then you would have others do those things for you. They would cultivate the field and you could simply watch them and tell them how to do it. Yes, that would be a great idea, Demeter said now convinced and happy. My lords and ladies. I wanted to ask whether it would be possible to give man fire. It would help them tremendously and make them prosper. Having them prosper would be in your interests as well, as gods. I feel like that should be our responsibility, Prometheus continued. Don't you dare tell us what our responsibilities are and what not, Prometheus, Hera said. You are not one of the Olympians, so don't get a big head before you do what was asked of you. Of course, Lady Hera. I apologize if that came out wrong. Please forgive me. Hum. You may leave to begin with your work. Don't disappoint me. Prometheus, said Zeus, ending the discussion. Yes, Lord Zeus. I will not disappoint you. Prometheus left the throne room and after the doors had closed Hades spoke. Ever the charming woman, Ahira? But seriously Zeus, what's the reason you want to see this happen? Are you in need of worship? Do the gods not give you enough anymore? How dare you Hades? Make sure to know your place. Zeus is your king, Hera screamed. Don't get your pulse up, you might suffer a stroke. Now Zeus tell me what is your goal here. I have no goal. The other pantheons also started their path to advance and evolve their animals further. We have to make sure we are not left behind and maybe even the first to do it. Aha! This meeting is a jurend. Hades stay. Hades raised his eyebrows. He was about to tell Zeus to F asterisk CK off when he thought about something. He hadn't been able to concentrate the entire meeting. The feeling he had was not going away and only grew stronger. After everyone had left Hades and Zeus were the last ones in the throne room. So, what is it? I want you to open up my skull. Ha! Huh. Chapter 50, Athena After everyone had left Hades and Zeus were the last ones in the throne room. So, what is it? I want you to open up my skull. Ha! Huh. Open up my skull. Since waking up I have been having the worst migraine imaginable. And you think opening your skull to let out some steam would help? I am always fascinated by how dumb you can sound. I mean how is that your first thought when dealing with a migraine? Do you think that there is just hot air that wants to come out? You know what? Let's do it. I can see it work. Hades took out a hammer from his inventory curse. He really had to improve this thing. He had already taken away its consciousness and had it work like that. But it still felt wrong. What he wanted was something like the gates of Babylon. Yeah, that would be appropriate for him. He better work on that soon. But that would have to wait until he deals with his problem. Hades didn't wait for Zeus' permission. He large fied the hammer and then swung it full force. That was a bad idea though. Way. The hammer impacted Zeus' head and split that skull right open. Brain matter and blood splashed everywhere. Hades activated infinity to keep himself clean. Oh shit. It's everywhere. Oh, Hades what have you done? Eh whatever. And then from, where the brain used to be. A figure shot out and stood in the throne room. It was a woman. She had dark hair, 
an olive complexion and grey eyes, which must be associated with knowledge and dignity. Although there is not much of that dignity right now. I am Athena, the goddess of wisdom, craft and warfare. I have been born from Zeus' thoughts. Wow wow wow, calm down fancy pants. That's nice and all but we have ourselves a gory situation here, Hades stopped her from doing her grand speech. Also what's with all the armor, helmet as well as shield and spear? Where did those come from? I thought you said. Eh, forget him, he'll be fine. Luckily the hammer hit him on the head and through the brain. That's his least used organ anyway. But, won't he suffer some lasting damage and then might his personality change? Athena asked. Pfft, as long as the dick is still there, he's still Zeus, believe that. So, should we clean this OR? Clean? This? God no. We'll just leave through those doors and let him pick himself up. You can't kill the dumb ones that easy. They're like weeds, they always come back. Athena looked at Hades in a questioning way. You don't have a very high opinion of your king. Why is that? Oh? Are throwing the first stone then? Better make sure that Daddy Dearest doesn't find out your little secret, Hades said with a devious smirk. How do you know that? Why so surprised? There is no chance I would ever believe that Zeus' thoughts could produce something, even less a goddess and one of wisdom no less. Ha 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 ha. That was a poorly thought out plan. But you'll get an A for average. Athena looked at Hades. He was not how her mother told her. He seemed to be laid back without a hidden agenda for power. But she had to wait and see. If he told anyone who she was, then that could ruin her plan to punish her father. She had to make sure this was kept a secret. You might want to curb your bloodlust, Hades said and looked at her. His eyes glowed light purple with hints of red. Athena could feel the pressure building on her and stopping her from breathing. Or you might get hurt, he finished. The pressure stopped and she took deep breaths. Remember, goddess of wisdom, if you prepare to kill, you should also prepare to be killed. Some things are not to be hunted, because there might be more to them than meets the eye. Still waters, run deep after all. After saying that, Hades sunk into his shadow again leaving Athena to herself in the messy throne room. Athena POV My name is Athena. I am the daughter of Metis and Zeus, the king of Olympus. When my mother was pregnant with me, Zeus got a prophecy that stated that one of his children that he would have with Metis, would grow to be stronger than he is. So to stop that from happening, he tricked my mother into turning into a fly and then swallowed her. How ironic! I was born inside Zeus' stomach and was taught by my mother. It was hard for her and she told me all about the history of the world that she knew of. I could see the pain and betrayal she felt. She spent some years raising me and teaching me everything she knew and also everything she knew about the family of my father. The Olympians as they were called. The new rulers of Olympus. None of my uncles and aunts seemed like much, except my uncle Hades. Mother told me what she knew about him and how she regretted ever making an enemy out of him. She told me never to anger him or get on his bad side. I wasn't planning to, but the more I heard, the more I was unhappy that he didn't help my mother. I deduced that he could have, had he wanted to. When I confronted mother with that, she just smiled. She told me that she knew that and this was the reason Hades never punished her. Flashback what do you mean, he never punished you? Why would he punish you? And for what? I told you about the fear I had that Hades could one day rule Olympus instead of your father. I was afraid he would try to make Zeus look bad. To get ahead of Hades, I told Zeus what I thought and he seemed to agree with me. But after that, his paranoia seemed to increase whenever Hades did something. No matter what, he seemed to be doing everything just to get the throne after the war with the Titans. I also thought so. And when your father accused Hades of bringing Oceanus on our tail, he just left. I never would have seen this coming. 
Hades left the camp and did not participate in the war for over a decade. Things did not go well after that. We lost most major battles and when it finally looked like we could win, after Hades had joined our side again, me and Zeus did the same thing again. We got suspicious of Hades once more and I was sure that he would use all of his accomplishments to get voted as ruler of Olympus. He did not. Not only did he not brag about his accomplishments of killing two titans at once or killing Kronos, but he didn't. Even. Show. Up. He didn't care about becoming king or ruling. While Zeus and I were making plans to secure his rule. Hades was just relaxing and didn't care about us at all. That is why I know that this is my punishment from Hades. He punished Zeus by cursing him, but he never punished me. And now, I am here. You are correct. Hades could have stopped this and the fact that he didn't mean that he wanted this to happen. Flashback end. This was huge. Because not only did this mean Hades wanted to punish my mother. It also meant that he knew this was going to happen. And that made him dangerous. The moment I thought about taking him out, to preserve my secret, he noticed and pressured me. He didn't even look mad. Just, amused. But his eyes were dangerous and I understood at this moment. Hades is dangerous. Third person POV. The doors to the throne room opened and in came the rest of the Olympians. What happened here? Where is Hades? What did he do? Hera screamed. I am Athena. I have been born from Zeus thought. This has given him headaches since this morning. Zeus asked Hades to help him open his skull and it would seem, that Hades used a bit, too much force. You think? After a long explanation, Hera finally seemed to calm down. Zeus was slowly regaining something that looked like a head. Not long and Zeus would go back to his usual self of a philanderer. Meanwhile with Hades. Hades was in the end again. He was currently sitting in the training room. That was the sturdiest room there was in the underworld. Not only could it withstand the chaotic forces of the void, but it could also take his strongest attack and not budge. But as he sat in a meditative position, the walls were trembling again. There was something wrong with him and he had to deal with it now before he destroyed everything he had built. He could feel it in the deepest parts of his soul that something had changed. He felt like a caterpillar that should now get ready to become a butterfly. But he didn't know, how? What was he supposed to do? Hades let the talk with Hecate pass through his mind. He remembered everything. She told him about the sphere of the gods and that it was the source of all magic and that it was one of the fundamental forces of the multiverse. That's right. It was then that something had happened. He remembered the fundamental forces from his past life. It was a big deal. He first found out about them because of the Flash and his connection to the Speed Force. But that was not the trigger. It was when he thought about harnessing these forces or at least some of them that his problem began. He thought about, the Death Force, the Void Wind and then. The Sixth Note. Once again Hades fell into this epiphany-like state. It was as if something was trying to reveal itself to him and he was so close to understanding what. What was the Sixth Note? The sixth note was, the opposite of the dimensional superstructure. And the dimensional superstructure was, the cosmic force which governs all things imaginable and unimaginable and it is part of the harmonious forces. How did he know that? It was unclear. All that knowledge to his questions seemed to pop into his brain. Now there was only the final straw. If the sixth note was the opposite of the dimensional superstructure, then... The sixth note, is the cosmic force beyond imagination and is unlocked when the impossible is glimpsed. The impossible is glimpsed, impossible. Of course. The impossible is glimpsed. Just like what he had. He had glimpsed the impossible. He used to be a human, living in the original reality from where all these comics were born. He had seen it and gotten wishes granted to him and had understood the most fundamental part of it all it was all fiction. No. That's wrong. I used to be fiction. It used to be a comic, 
an idea and imagination, but now. Now it was real. It was made real through the fact that he perceived it as such. Was Bishop Berkeley right? It didn't matter as it was all real now. Asterisk. Time stopped at that moment and Hades' consciousness left his body and traveled beyond reality, beyond the vast void that encompassed it all and became so fast that the friction seemingly made him dissolve into nothingness. When he opened his eyes, he was in a dimly lit room, sitting on a comfortable chair and across him sat someone whose features he couldn't make out. Welcome. Adrian. It has been a while. Thanks for listening.